We are Legends of Avantress. This is Icebound. Lend us your strength and join us. Serious yeah. <laughs> Nothing's funny over That's here. That's Mike's fault. This is Mike's fault. <laughs> Life is suffering. Everything's scary. Doom is impending. Derek? <coughs> Interesting slaps. It is the middle of the night on the ninth day of the twelfth month. The sky is utterly black except for lonely stars that feel icy and distant between the dense forest of spruce, fir, and pine you now find yourselves in. Trees surround you in all directions, claustrophobically bunched together like cultists performing a dark ritual. Your only source of light, a humble campfire that flickers and spits in defiance of the bitter cold. There is no moonlight. The moon is new, and only five days remain until the winter solstice. You remember that the clan of the Frosthammer a gang of kobolds loyal to the white dragon that dwells in this frigid realm, promised to wait for you after you left them, offering safe passage should you be able to bring back the head of a monstrous winged beast that had been harrying them. It is no longer clear. <clears throat> it is no longer clear if there is enough time to complete your quest and return to them. A chance meeting with a potential ally, a mute woman hunting on her own, has stressed your already precarious situation. Compounding this development, you now find yourself staring at the collapsed shape of a young man wreathed in blood. The five of you stand now around a crackling fire, huddled for warmth next to your new companion. Roland's body is but a handful of steps away. Still and unmoving in the shallow snow that clings to the ground and the trees and your clothes. His first words upon seeing you again in the months that have passed, thank the gods, quickly dissolves into the shadowed forest. Except for the sputtering and hissing fire, it is deadly quiet. What happens next is up to you. I'm gonna, without saying a word, I'm just gonna slowly get up and start to hobble over to him. Oh my God! I to see. What? Well, what happened to him? <clears throat> careful, Yoni. Careful. I'll kneel down and I'll place my hand on him, and it will glow with this sort of wintry white, icy blue, and I will give him healing touch. Oh, well, uh, how does that work? Uh, I roll a 1d8 plus uh, my Wiz modifier. He takes 8 points of healing. You see, as you get close enough to touch the cabin boy that you knew on the ship, the more abound, that his wounds 
clothes. The healing magic of your touch being what it is, the bite marks on his hands that had been flowing fresh blood stop flowing. The ears that are completely missing from the sides of his head, they too close as wounds and stop flowing. But he does not stir. Uh, I'd ask that you make a medicine check. Is he dead? <clears throat> Unclear at the moment. Uh, that is, a, I think, proficient too. So that's going to be an eleven. Uh, nineteen. With a nineteen, it's very obvious that he's still alive. Oh. You can see the shallow, slow breaths of his back as he is face planted into the hard pack of this forest floor. Um, uh, there's no snow coming down, but his, the, you can see the multiple blankets that have been wrapped around him, uh, presumably to stay warm, uh, the, the, are, are, are coated with matted snow. Um, the, 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 the body just lies there still, but uh, he seems to be surviving for now. Uh, I'm going to, in this moment, <clears throat> very very quickly so I'm looking around over my shoulder and, and trying to see if there's any kind of imminent threat perhaps some horrible animal has, has, has done this to him or maybe there are, are, are attackers somewhere make a perception check are I'm you abs- verbalizing that or are you uh, no I'm just I'm okay. telling the DM in character I just I really get into RP <laughs> perception you said mm-hmm I rolled a natural one, so I got a total of a five. I see nothing, but I'm terrified. You are looking in all directions, Ah, and uh, ah. the shadows between the trees uh, are um, uh, uh, like a cloak. And as dark as the sky, um, you only really just have the features of the trunks around you and the um, shadows of uh, your companions, your allies, the rest of the people with you. What in the nine hells could have done that to him? He is alive, but it is... Do I, um... With that medicine check, can I kind of get a sense of what may have happened? Uh, with a 19, um, you see that he has lost a lot of weight. Uh, it would be even obvious um, to uh, uh, looking down at him without having to turn him and starting to really like examine him uh, medically that uh, he's gaunt. And the... Um, he's gone? Gaunt. Gaunt. Uh, like shadows of uh, his gaunt. As in skinny or um, that sort of thing. Uh. Um, the marks on his hands, uh, you, you can lift one up and, and, and get a closer look. And as you're starting to examine him, you, you see that there are uh, bite marks, but they do not look like the bite marks from a, um, a beast or a creature or something like that. Uh, uh, they, no. they do, in fact, look quite humanoid. He is alive, but he is starving, and he has been either eating himself, or our boiled crew has been partaking instead. Ah, uh, what? E- eating himself? I don't know what's worse! You think those bite marks are uh, himself? He could have been eating himself out of desperation, or someone else could have been eating him. No, Out of desperation. I've heard, heard of this happening in the northern round <clears throat> up in Yona and northern Inari and Mamut. I mean, that wasn't, or no beast that did that. Beasts of men. Our crewmates weren't fishermen. They weren't hunters. They weren't survivalists. We, we, we should get him closer to the fire. Now let's drag him over here. I'll, I'll reach down and I'll pick him up and I will bring him, uh, I'll sort of, you know, I'll take my, my cloak off and I'll kind of lay it down and I'll put him on the cloak um, near the fire without being too close. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, we don't want to cook him and eat him. <laughs> He's already been thrown <laughs> off of that. You, 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 set the, you set him down and um, your new uh, companion, uh, this woman in her late 20s or early 30s oh. that you've only just met in the last 24 hours is standing there. Um, she's lifted up her bow. And she has, um, she's not uh, 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 put an arrow into the notch, uh, so to speak, um, but she's got uh, one hand on, on an arrow in her quiver and sort of looking at, at, at each of you, sort of trying to get gauge the situation and understand. Um, she seems to sense that you know this person, uh, but she's not making any more movement than that. She's just standing and, and uh, being as careful and cautious as she can be. 
he can't have made it far in his condition. Should we assume that he was attacked by by the shipmates in there close by? Should we be on guard? Oh, gods, I hope not. If they are in the same state, I hate to say this, as he is, I don't believe there'll be much trouble. <laughs> I think that Scrim could punch one of them and they'd fall over. Yeah, I'm incredibly strong. I mean, obviously. That's what I meant. <laughs> We need to focus on the important things, Barnabas, <laughs> not my immense strength, all right? <laughs> Taishan's right. They could be anywhere. Or <clears throat> perhaps it's more likely that he's the last man standing. Well, to be fair, you did mention Yona, and I gotta tell you, where I'm from, the hills have eyes. And when there are cannibals about, they could be literally anywhere. Oh, oh this is awful. Oh. This keeps getting worse. It, it, it is, again, it is likely that if there is cannibalism, I mean, it's They could be watching us right now, waiting for us to fall asleep so they could sneak into camp and just take a nip out of one of our fingers. No, I so like wouldn't be able to punch him if he's asleep. Do nah, you think I'm going to go to sleep, Taishan? I'm never going to go to sleep. I'm going to stay on perfect alert. And if anything comes even close to this camp, I'm going to give him the brutal blade. I hate to say mm. it, but in weather like this, with trees as thick as that... You'd never even be able to hear him coming. Stay here. Keep an eye on him. I will take a look and see where he came from. You're going to go by yourself? I don't think that's a great idea. I should go with you. Can you stay quiet? Can you see in the dark? Well, no. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very perceptive. She's, she's, I mean, you, you know she's our best hunter. I, then, I, I definitely wasn't volunteering myself. I could use your ears. We could both go, but it... <laughs> no, I'm no, no, right no, here yeah. by the light source. <laughs> and I'm watching him, and I'm staying with her because she looks dangerous and deadly, and I'd rather have her on our side. Really seems like you guys have it under control. <laughs> That's I exactly right, Taishan. That. That's this, exactly right. This woman who is uh, uh, now at your camp um, reaches down and uh, pulls one of the loose uh, logs in the center of the campfire and uh, holds up what is a makeshift torch of sorts and sort of gestures yeah. to you or your near, um, you Queenie or, or your near to, to take uh, some form of, of light or illumination. I'll hop on over to her. Thank you, darling. We'll use this if we need to. You stay safe, okay? This man, and it, he's was kind of our friend. We know him. So you're safe. And I'll take the torch. Did we get her name? Uh, Queenie has been referring to her as Honey, but no one has oh. asked her her name. Oh, then, uh, young lady, you... We appreciate all the help you focus on getting a full belly and some rest. We're professionals. God, I'm going to look at Tai Shen. What is he talking about? Professionals? We're, we're stuck here. We're, this is an unfortunate uh, a circumstance. We're Te- doing the best we can. Technically, we were hired to come to this land, so by definition, we're That is a very professional. loose definition. I think, can you hire someone with just their freedom? Honey, is that a payment? Well, we're gone. Can you keep an eye out on the horizon and just make sure that these... Chuckle fucks don't get in too much trouble while I'm out. Oh, thank goodness. All right. And if you guys get into trouble, then you can start yelling. There's a very, very low chance that we'll make it to you in time. So I suggest running back here as quickly as you can. That is what I plan to do. When I shift, you may mount me. All right. Oh, um, and I will interesting word choice. Uh, there, go ahead. <laughs> I will shift into a wolf. Um, okay, that's bad. And, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you'll see. Should have uh, been a frost wolf to blend in. Yeah. All right, now I'll go. That's Why not? cool. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know. It's a little cliche. <laughs> it's not your and your style. <laughs> Play like to me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and my my one sort Sips of tea. Uh, ruined the eye will glow sort of blue even in my wolf form, and uh, mm-hmm. would have been cooler with white fur. <laughs> I like a queenie and growl. <laughs> I'll uh, tip my hat to everyone, and then I will just uh, quickly jump up on top of Yornir's back. Um, 
All right, I'm ready when you are. Come on, bees. And so I want to basically go it's out into the darkness, mm -hmm. and I want to try to track um, to see using my scent, my vision, and my ears as much as I can. Uh, get a sense of where he came from to see if I can follow his his path. Okay. Um, let's make and, a survival check. For and that I purpose. will be hyper perceptive with my ears, turning them this way and that, and listening. Like satellite um, visions. Yeah. To uh, see what I can hear and if anything sounds unusual or. Would you say that this perception check relies on smell or hearing in some way? I would say that it relies on smell in some way. Is anyone else exactly picturing the the Zelda game where Link's a wolf? Yes. And <laughs> Queen is Midnight. Yeah. 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 He's literally Midnight. Yeah. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Um, I love Midnight. It's my new favorite. Yeah. 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 Yornir off and disappears. It almost uh, vanishes. Uh, as soon as the campfire light uh, reaches its circumference, its perimeter, it's as if the, uh, neither of them are, are, are there. And you're left alone with the unconscious, uh, unconscious body of Roland and the mute woman who is um, keeping a very uh, alert face. When she sees what Yornir was capable of, that magical transformation, she jumped back a little bit. Magic. Your friend. Oh, I, I bet you haven't seen nothing like that. A, a great big man turn into a wolf and then a rabbit say, come on, bees, and ride off. <laughs> 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 I've known him for months and I still can't believe it. <laughs> Starts to gesture and in a few motions, you get the sense of this is the first I've been in the world. Really, this is the first I've been uh, uh, beyond the the settlement or town or or, or city that I'm from. Uh, is the world full of magic like this? Only the chest or the belly people who were my captors had abilities like this. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's magic everywhere. It's pretty crazy, actually. I mean, until we got here, it was a pretty normal thing, and then we had some trouble with it for a while where we weren't able to fully harness what we could do. But, yeah, it's everywhere. Mr. Fire Blossom here just shoots foot fire out of his fingertips and from his snout. Yeah. I saw him. As you right? He burned, <laughs> he burned a bush. He was able to control flame. Yeah. How do you... How do you learn to do this? I, to be honest, I quite literally woke up one day and was just able to. It was frightening at first. And to be fair, I don't even like to rely on it too much because, well, that's a story for another day. But some people could just do it. Some people learn how to do it. And other people, I don't know, it's just all around us. You know, you can feel it. Yeah, there are many different types of magic in the world and... No one person harnesses it in the same way. Some people it comes to naturally. I fell in love with the most beautiful women in the entirety of Avantress. And now I can do this. And uh, suddenly I'm going to get completely drenched in seawater, get covered in barnacles, and I'm going to stick my hand out, and it's going to horribly mutate into a giant crab claw. <laughs> <laughs> you all seem very fortunate. Yeah, well, we're a, quite the gaggle of freaks, that's for sure. <laughs> and and I'll take, uh, I'll go into my spice balls and pull out some ancient estuary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of, I'm awake. They're gone. They might not be coming back. I, I need to eat some food. All right, I'm a stress eater, and I, I, I just let me eat. Well, I, uh, I could eat too. Tell me how you know your friend. And we will now transition over to wolf and rabbit. <laughs> wabbit. Wabbit. Twilight wabbit. <laughs> Twilight wabbit. The trail is, uh, even with an 18, you could have gotten uh, 12, and it would have been quite quite easy to, 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 to find. You, you, you could have gotten a 10, I'd say. Um, uh, the footprints are obvious. The, 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 the occasional spatter of blood. 
that had been trailing uh, as Roland walked through the this forest um, is obvious. Uh, your your nose is finely attuned to uh, the scent that you caught on on Roland, and you're able to follow that extreme with extreme precision. You keep going, you keep going, and it just seems to be a, a meandering through the forest with no feeling of direction, mm-hmm. uh, no feeling of, uh, uh, it, it, it's heading in the in the southeast direction that uh, he stumbled upon your camp, certainly. But there, you don't stumble upon anyone else. You don't find uh, additional foot tracks. You don't even find very much, um, much evidence of other beasts or anything like that in the mm-hmm. forest. You have to make a decision at a certain point as 10 minutes go by, 20 minutes go by, 30 minutes go by, are you going to continue to see if you can find some some uh, uh, destination or will you turn back? So I don't know if Queenie would have anything to offer to, to Wolf Yornir in this time. Um, let me see how long my wild shape In regards right to what? Well, I don't know. Just So I think my wild shape now lasts two hours. <laughs> That's pretty so good. I would oh, probably wow. go down the path for an hour, and then knowing that I had about an hour left to kind of get back and sort of hustle back. Okay. Um, unless Queenie would be like, "Gad Zooks, we should go back." No, I'd, I'd let you do your thing unless I heard or sensed anything that would lead me to think that we needed to change course. Yeah, and I think my goal was just to make sure that there's not like you know Impending forty cannibals, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bushwhackers with like <laughs> knives in their the teeth. Hills have eyes. Oh, God, please, Ta- no. taking, taking the fifty-five minutes before you decide to turn back, or however long, um, the, uh, you feel confident that there weren't any immediate followers in uh, the path of Roland. That he wasn't fleeing directly from uh, anyone in the vicinity. That feeling. Um, uh, of confidence follows you as you eventually circle around and start to return following those same footsteps back towards the campsite. When you return, a full two hours have passed and it's obvious that Taishan, Barnabas, Scrim are enjoying a meal and having a the labored conversation of waiting to figure out exactly what meaning a certain gesture mm-hmm. is and and uh they're talking about uh Roland. Uh they they seem to have shared at least much of the the initial journey before the were icebound. In in that time after we would have said like the Scrim said he was hungry, yeah. I would have said like, you know, you go <clears> ahead <throat> and eat and I would have had Tai Shen help me try to feed Roland mm. and like just try to like open up his mouth and just get some soup down into his mouth. Oh, okay. And so, we don't have to role play this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so I don't know if that's something that we could do, but like, I, I would say, oh, you, you, you had throat. a very drawing day, Mr. Staviscotch, and you young lady, you are honored guest, you can eat as much as you'd like. Mr. Fire Blossom, will you uh, help me with Mr. Stonebridge? Um, Barnabas, I don't know. That seems like it might be a waste. <laughs> You're really wasting your time. I mean, look at the guy. He's basically dying. Well, he was the cabin boy, Mr. Stavis. Gosh, he didn't have any role in anything that happened. Well, yeah, now he's got like ten less fingers. <laughs> no thanks to the thugs that that he probably got uh, uh, harassed and, and, and inscripted by. Yeah, I guess you're right. Probably doesn't hurt to try to feed him. <laughs> Taishen, you roll over the body of uh, that had been uh, huddled over almost in the fetal position next to the, the campfire, and this is a, a skeleton of the person that you once knew. Uh, he's, he's lost so much of his musculature, his nutrition. He's um, clearly been starving for a, an extended period of time. And <clears throat> with the help of Barnabas, you attempt to um, uh, get some food in it, the both of you. Uh, go ahead and make a, a medicine check. Which one of us? Uh, Barnabas is your suggestion. All right. Am I being assisted by my good friend Taishan Fireballs? I would agree that you are being assisted by Taishan. Nice. Oh, sick. Sick. Oh, that'll be a 21. Hey. A 21. Um, you are able to open the mouth and you feel very confident as you pour um, not not food bits because there's not going to be any chewing but broth. Yeah. I would have very... I would have gotten some snow and put it in there so we didn't burn as like 
mouth. You, and like, <laughs> you do the like wrist check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I blow on it. <laughs> that that, that makes it. Oh, no! Toy shit, no! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Um, I really thought this would work! <laughs> it goes down, and uh, um, Roland's body... <coughs> Wait. Ah, that's good, Mr. Stonebridge. Well, I guess we should have gotten something a little less seasoned. <laughs> Ancient estuaries got a kick. You you all right? Okay, you're with us! He's among the living. Are you back? Boy, let's let's let him rest. Hang on, a lot of noise. He, he eventually comes to rest and calms after this mm. coughing and 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 seizing fit. Uh, and it's at this point, uh, after sharing a story with the um, muted woman and uh, with Honey, let's call her, and uh, uh, making this attempt and cooking a whole meal, that you see a wolf being ridden by a rabbit folk emerge from between the trees, uh, from the very same direction that Roland initially mm. had come to you. Hey, you guys made it back. Yeah, we have very important news. What's what? That? We didn't see shit. Oh. Uh. So, we're probably going to be safe tonight. Well, have some soup. All right. It's pretty good. I'll get <laughs> off a wolf, uh, wolf near. I like that. I like that. we got to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd say you have oh, yeah, five, ten minutes remaining at this point. Uh, depending on I'll, your... I'll shift out. I'll shift yeah. out. Yeah. There was no concern of the rest of the crew, at least in the vicinity. We went quite a ways, and he was by himself for some time. And I would add an additional detail, which is to say, with your keen wolf senses, you got far enough out in an hour that you couldn't even smell your campfire until you got within a certain distance. Mm -hmm. I gotta wonder how long he was wandering for in this condition. I mean, this is pretty terrible. It's, it's a miracle he didn't die before getting to us. It's also right. kind of weird that we caught up to them so fast. But I guess maybe, I don't know, something doesn't add up here. Well, if they ran out of supplies and we've had Yorner able to move a great deal for us, so maybe we just had the capacity to move quicker. Yeah. Or it is possible, it is common in many cultures, that the weak are banished. Perhaps he was told to leave. They did they not want to end him themselves, as is, you know, as a son of pity, but they left him to the elements. This doesn't seem like much of a mercy. It is not. But no. we don't know. There is no sign of the rest of the crew. We know they were heading in this direction. And so. it wouldn't be surprising if they all looked like that. That they would just not be able to keep going on and just decided to make camp and wait it for whatever they were waiting for. When he is able, I'm sure we can learn everything that we need to from him. I will enjoy some soup. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> How does your ear feel about spicy food? <laughs> um, yeah. You all enjoy what's left of the soup that Barnabas has prepared, and it's one, two o'clock in the morning now. Dark. Dark night and uh, it rises. <gasps> yeah, um, <laughs> and you uh, start to get rises. you start to get ready into uh, it's it's still freezing cold. Uh, I'll, I'll remind you that it is um, unbelievably chilly uh, in uh, below zero at this at this stage. But the warmth of the fire, the wolf pelts, pelts that you three wear, the the gear that. Um, Yornir has, uh, from Mamut, the natural resistance that Barnabas enjoys, uh, you're able to curl up into your blankets and start to try and get some few hours of rest before you wake up the next morning and decide what it is that you're going to do. Uh, uh, 
to, to, to turn around and head south to follow uh, Honey uh, to the lodge or, or the, the, the home that, that she described in, in, when, when she initially met you, uh, you or, to, or to make some other choice. Mm-hmm. And with these thoughts swimming in your mind, as the campfire continues to crackle and pop, <laughs> you hear the sound of Roland's voice immediately, um, bolt upright as he jumps up. <gasps> oh, sweet gods! Oh. Ah! Ah! Wait, Mr. Stonebridge? Bar- Bar- Barnabas. That, oh, you're all right, you. lad. Oh, you're all right. You're safe. You're warm. Well, that's you're fed. I don't know if that's all right. Oh, thank the gods. Oh, thank the gods. <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> well, just give him a minute. He's clearly ha- he clearly needs some time. Let's not overwhelm the guy. Yeah, I mean, that was absolutely terrifying the way he bolted <laughs> up like that. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Roland, I'm so glad that you are conscious now. We fed you a little bit of food, but I think you need to eat more. If we get you a bowl, you think you can handle that? I'm so hungry. We'll, we'll get you something to eat. Barnabas, can you get him something to eat? I'll, I'll, I'll melt some water. You, you want to help? Yeah, and I just absolutely. start so, uh, shoveling some snow into like a cup or a bowl. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of fat left. We'll at least get you some, some broth. We'll get you some fat. And we'll bring him water and uh, broth. He, you, uh, you, you give him the water, and um, he starts to bring it up to his, his lips, and... Do you want some help? What, what, what's the matter? What, what are you doing there? What is that? I can't. I can't. I can't. He reaches over and he picks up the, the bowl of, of soup. And he pulls a, a spoon out. What? what? I'm going to look to the last thing. Ah, what? You, you're near. You, please tell me that you know what this is. What has happened to you? I can't eat. Why can you not eat? You, you, have, you feel you're physically fit enough to eat. It, it terrifies me. It, it, it's, it's, I get this feeling of fear in my heart when I try to put it into my mouth. I can't. I can't. I don't understand. I don't it, it's understand. just food. There's nothing to be scared of. You should be overjoyed to have the best cooked food that you've had since you left my ketchup. I'm gonna walk around behind him, Roland. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hands on your shoulders. All right, honey. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hands on Roland's shoulders and I'm gonna start giving him like a, a rough massage and just like mm-hmm. rubbing his back. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. You went through something that was really traumatic. It's been scary what you've been going through, hasn't it? Yeah, I... You're having a real rough time. We, ever since we got here, it's been so bad. This place is scary, but you're safe right now, Roland. We've got you. Stay, right. st- stay I'm, still, and I want to... I'm here with you. I'm not, I'm not going to hurt you. I want to go down uh, and kneel down in front of him, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, me? No. Oh, I'm just trying God. to keep... No, you were, you were good. I... And, so I will kneel down in front of him while Queenie is massaging. Uh, I will say, stay still. And I'm going to kind of just like sort of grab his face. And then my right eye will flat, will sort of glow uh, a bright light blue. And I will use Detect Magic to see ah. if there's any kind of charm or anything that's like magically preventing him from doing it. I, I don't know how else to say this. It's magical for you. There's no other way to say this. There's no other way to say this. He has mummies. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got mummy curse. How? <laughs> it's ice mummy campaign. Yeah! <laughs> I love ice mummy. Oh, <laughs> it's like it's the sequel to the hit film Ice Spiders. Oh, Ice mummies. No, I like mummies. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, that's gonna be my debut film. Ice mummies. I can be Scorpion Queenie. I, I love, love that. that. Oh, yeah. that's Very pretty good. good. Yeah. That's good yeah. Thanks. I'm just checking something real quick. Oh wow! The fact judgment. that you have to check Uh-oh. is not a good thing. Uh, Fear boys, had, man. Uh, having that, uh, having that detect magic is pretty. Pretty useful. Rangers, man. 
I mean, I just, I've got... Bees? Bees? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> question mark, bees? Bees seem to be bees, Whoop Mega Man. People in chat like your uh, t-shirt, Mike. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really happy with this purchase. My t-shirt has nice. a pug in a mug. It's a, pu- a pugkin spice latte. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Your, name, your oh. eye flashes, oh. <laughs> and you uh, turn his head from side to side. He's got these spasms and twitches so it's a little difficult to keep him still even with uh both of queenie's hands on his shoulders and through your eye you sense no aura you don't see uh, uh, uh any any school of magic or or anything emanating from from him that would tell you that he's under a, an enchantment or some other magical effect does not seem magical. Whoa, 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 okay. Well, then everybody should just probably take a few steps back. What if he's sick and it's contagious? It's very possible. I will. I refuse to lose the ability to eat, because if that happens, I'm just going to let the beast take me. <laughs> what? Where have you been? What What happened? What happened to you? You, you were gone for so long when we were... At the ship. How are you here now? Oh, gods, I don't even want to think about that. Uh, still gives me the creeps. There's no other way to say this, Mr. Stonebridge. <laughs> we visited a giant stone tower that lost a week for us. And then the captain broke his leg and got killed by a dragon. It was quite a series of events. It kind of went like this. <laughs> yeah. We, we really lost did. control of the situation very quickly. Uh, and we, by the time we came back, we found the poor bastard that was practically gutted in the snow and left to die. Yeah, in a very passive-aggressive note that y'all left for us saying, don't fucking follow you, so... It doesn't seem quite passive. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting choice of words there, Queenie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you, kept the, if you kept the letter. We did. You yeah. did? You have yeah, it on yeah, your personal? I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think it's when it says the giant fuck off underlined with two exclamation marks. Well, I feel like all caps. three exclamation marks would have really. Oh, well, you know what? I, I, I agree. I agree. If you really want to be not passive, you do the third. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. Well, the off is underlined three times. It really, is quite mm, bold. You're right. But the fuck mm. is only underlined once. Yeah. Passive aggressive. Roland's face is <laughs> <laughs> what, what was already a pained face is shattered with emotion. He isn't listening to you about the letter. It was when you mentioned the captain's death that he uh, immediately was <clears throat> overwhelmed by what is obviously grief. That's what happened to the captain. <laughs> Ha, 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 a, a dragon? How? how? Oy, the, uh, the very same dragon that uh, harried our ship uh, when we first got icebound uh, arrived and spared our lives, but uh, entombed the captain's head in a block of pure ice. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, it's, there's it's, no... <laughs> it's a little out there, but it, it happened. Trust us. We tr- we tried to uh, smash the ice. Uh, it was too late. I think we just stood by watching that he died in the snow. There, there's nothing good here. This place is cursed. We're all gonna die. But I mean, we're doing all right so far. You're not dead. It's all right. We're we're hanging in there. We're not doomed yet. But yeah, I agree. This place sucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's hope, Roland. We're, we're we've met other beings here, kobolds. They they have a, a a gathering, a civilization, and if we can make it to that, we stand a good chance of getting through the the winter at least and getting out of here. We're, we're looking for a flower, but what happened to you? Where where have you been? What 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 have the rest of the crew? Yeah, the guy that was gutted that we mentioned. I'm still stuck on that. Let's go one step at a time here. <laughs> Well, the, the, the rest of the crew got restless, and they said that you were dead, that we were on our own, or that you just left. I didn't believe it, because 
the captain. But they wanted to leave, and Mr. Armstead, he, the, the, the bosun, he refused, and that said that we should trust in the captain, and then there was a big fight about it. And he was killed. That'll do it. So yeah. they, they loaded that, up everything they the could with a sledge that the carpenter made, and we... I took I took his cat and 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 we didn't we didn't wait for you anymore. After after a few days, we just went north. We just started to to go and 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 see if we could find something, anything. We thought maybe there'd be a town or a village. It was so cold. It was so cold. It was so cold, and like we couldn't rest. We couldn't sleep. We 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 would just lie there and just have to drag these sledges over many miles. So we followed the coast up up along those cliffs there, and there was these big, enormous birds, these huge birds up uh, 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 that 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 one one of them uh, grabbed uh, uh, Ellis, the, the the carpenter, and pulled him off. I can still hear his scream, Mister Coombs. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, he died as he lived with a great big scream. <laughs> well, it's, very, it's pretty serendipitous <laughs> that uh, you know, Coons was the one who died because we were after the session and then after that. It's weird how that works, you know? It could have been anybody, but. <laughs> I guess and so. that was the fucking end of Mr. Coon. And I will never hear that name again. Never be mentioned again. I could have had a million uh, guesses, and I uh, never would have guessed that Coombs would have gotten scooped up and eaten immediately. Well, I guess all that there is to do is to rub one out. I mean, pour one out. Pour one out to Mr. Coons. Pour one out. Pour one out to Mr. Coons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I promise we're not laughing in character. This is very serious. This yeah, is, yeah. Uh, you guys are all like horrified. Oh, by this. I'm truly in trance. Oh my god, my stomach um, hurts. My throat would, hurts. Would that uh, trigger anything in Queenie's memory about birds that she had seen? Uh, yeah, these birds. Uh, you, you. Or that she described away, it. Remember, uh, yeah. I didn't have distances quite down pat, but that was what I was inferring that there were uh, live bird animals uh, all, all <laughs> the way, bird animals. all the way at the at the coast. And Did it you seems know that, that birds are a conspiracy created by the Illuminati? I've heard this. Yeah, and we will unpack that during a and show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Bar- Barnabas, I I did what you told me. I I, w- I was the cook, and I I did what you taught me. There was lots of food. We had hundreds of pounds of food left. What? We we saw that they picked through my yeah, but stores. Yeah, how food so fast? We've been living on dirt. It's been <laughs> months. There were thirteen of us. That's fair. Right. Well, Mr. Stonebridge, <laughs> so you kept all the men healthy then with your cooking, like I taught you. I I, I did my best. Quick, what do you do with the eggshells? <laughs> You throw them in the fire. <laughs> right? Yeah, continue. That's pr- they probably got wishes. <laughs> Everyone's supposed to know you're supposed to eat them. Eventually we made it to this ruined village. And there was... There was... This, this sled that, that had rails that could ride on the ice. And we thought we could take it north. And oh, we, we found your drawing. Oh. Yeah? Yeah, it's quite nice. I think we still have it. Uh, yeah, maybe show it to Here him. Here we go. <laughs> I don't have my drawings left anymore. I don't have my journal anymore. This is this is all I have left. Does, does he even have fingers to be able to grab the paper? Are they like gnarled stubs? No. Oh, uh, it looks like as fleshy bits as possible have been pulled from, but he se- seems to so still he be still able to... he still has digits. To, yeah, he still, yeah. yeah, yeah, he doesn't have, like, missing fingers. It looks like they've like been... The of them were it's like somebody <laughs> took a chicken wing and just... Had, oh. 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 oh! my god. So we took the sled thing, and they, they made me cook the cat. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, we found uh, remnants of that. The we were okay. We were okay, and we were running out of food then. 
Oh, you, you remember, lad, that uh, that's not what I taught you. Cats are good luck. You want the cats around. We should have listened. We didn't say anything for so long. We, we were flying up that river, and we thought, there's a forest, there's food here now. And some of the men, they, they, caught, a, they caught a caribou. They caught a caribou. One of them was killed hunting it, but we we had food. We had meat again. We had we we we'd been out for 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 a week at least, I think, and we were able to c- cook that and keep marching on through the forest. Got to get to the north coast. Got to get to the north coast. I I did what you taught me, and I I cooked that food. Right. And we continued into the forest each yeah. time the hunters went out. We'd get another caribou, but they were deadly. Those caribou, they would always take take out one of the one of the crew. Well, our numbers were getting fewer and fewer, which was kind of nice because each caribou went more longer. Finally, I I saw one. This big antlers antlered creature. I spotted it and and whispered and, and and they managed to kill it and it didn't seem so dangerous then. It seemed scared. They took it down and I helped to clean it and then we cooked it. But it didn't it didn't taste like what we'd been eating. When I tasted what I had prepared, I it tasted like poison. I coughed it up. They couldn't eat it either. It was our only food, and I knew they were as hungry as I was, and I couldn't bear to put it in my mouth. There were only four of us then. And I realized what had happened to the others. Looking in the eyes of those who were still around. So we had what was left of what we'd kept from the last kill. And it was sweet. And I realized they were going to come for me, that I was the next caribou. I took what I could of the food, and I left my journal, and I, I, I ran. About a week ago, I could hear them fighting as I ran. And I thought I was just dead. And I ran out of food, and... I had to eat something, so I have been help. Please, please help. <laughs> please. You are safe, and you will be healthy. Do you, just, <clears throat> I'm so tired. We will I'm help so you. We will help you eat. <clears throat> Who was the sea lawyer that was leading you lot and concocting this plan? Only only two were left when I ran. Walker, Clemens the quartermaster. Clemens. And Corliss, Mr. Garside. He was the one who... Mr. Uh, Yornir uh, 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 helped with his feet uh, when he got cold that one time. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Hmm? Your leg is shaking again. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cut the tension with a knife. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Who else? Just, just the three of us at the end. Only three. Me and Corliss and Walker. Yeah. Mr. Garcelli and Mr. Clemens. I think... I think that they killed each other. I think... I haven't seen or heard anything since I ran. It's very unlikely they are alive. Ugh. Or at least not both of them. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. We're not under immediate danger. <sighs> they were conspirators. Molly! Molly's back! Welcome. Hi, Molly. Hi, Molly! 
Oh, Molly. Molly. I hope you're feeling better. We've missed you. <laughs> Sorry, I saw Molly. I had to get excited. I will lean forward and I'll say, and I'll look at uh, uh, Mr. Stonebridge and I'll say, Lad, you did what you had to do. There is no shame. Do not let it sit with you or it'll drive you mad. And you need a lot more courage and strength. And if you let that guilt and shame weigh you down, you are going to be devoured by this land. You understand, lad? Barnabas is right. You've been rolling in the deep depths of despair. And so it is no wonder you have done what you have done. I think I'm already swallowed up. No, lad. I don't think I can keep going. I feel that's how that's not how a ship's cook talks. Mr. Stonebridge. Inside. I feel sick. I feel like I'm already dead. What do you mean? Be very specific in how you are feeling. I can't remember the last time I slept. I can't remember feeling good or feeling warm. I think maybe this is all a dream. Does this sound like anything that I have experienced in my several centuries of medicine man ship? Interesting. Make a um, history check. Ooh. Twist it. Twist it. That's better. Okay. Uh, I think it's a 14. Solid. Mm. Could be worse. I would pitch that to the creator of the world uh, setting style, depending on whether or not something like cannibalism and its um, uh, effect on humanoids would be something that happens in the north the way it's happening here. Um, I mean, I think that my thought would probably be that that it would be similar in, in the north as well as the south. Okay. Um, I think maybe we had talked about that briefly yeah. years ago at this point. Yeah, that's why yeah. I had to ask. I, I believe just, we, I I believe we had a similar I believe we had a similar conversation, but yes. The way that he's talking and especially his physical physicality um, is reminding you of these rare stories that were occasionally told in the um, woods of Mammut that uh, when such a foul taboo uh, as eating your own kind is done, that the land itself almost seems to rise up and put a stop to it very quickly, but that it is a violent transformation. And you can see the look of horror on the mute woman's face, who seems to have a tremendous amount of recognition in her face. Would I have a sense on if it's like a terminal kind of thing? Or like, you know, let's say, you know, and you're in your, like, he's, he encounters cannibals in some way. Has he ever witnessed anyone like being in his state and recovering? This would only be stories that were passed to you, perhaps through your circle, or from uh, local folklore that uh, villagers would talk about uh, if they were close to the mountains or close to this sort of thing, especially during hard winters. The outcome and solution always seemed to skip over, oh, there was cannibalism, and then... There wasn't. There wasn't. 
we will do what we can. You committed the great taboo. You're feeling the effects of the land. Help. Please. We will try to help. Oh, if Mr. Yornier specializes in the land. That's his whole thing. If there's anyone that can help you, it's it's Mr. Yornier right here, medicine man. Medicine. Do, you, gonna... do you think we all had no oh, I we all had uh, trouble sleeping and resting before the lights came to us. Yeah, but we didn't need each other. Well, <clears throat> yeah. I just, do you think maybe if he tells a story from his past at night, could help him seek rest? It worked for us. We haven't seen the lights in weeks. Right. That's it's been a long time. Or months. Yeah, it's been uh, probably two months, maybe more. We haven't needed them before. They helped us. They they unlocked potential. The uh, honey, we'll call her. She is gesturing, and she's starting to pull a quiver, out, uh, arrow out from her qu- quiver. This is not known to you? I've I've heard of whalers eating each other, but no bad luck, horrible death, but nothing like this. Do you even, know more? Even the my captors were very specific about not eating your own kind. They knew and told us never to do that here. Oh, that's not good. What happens if you do that? That wasn't something they told us. I want to just look at Taishan and be just give him like the grimmest look that I've ever given you. <laughs> that's a grim look. <laughs> we will do what we can to feed you. It is unclear what the triad has in mind for you, but this is your best hope for salvation. You're speaking now to Roland? Yes, yes, I turned to Roland, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. You're gonna be all right, lad. You're a ship's cook. He takes this bundle of blankets that have been lurched over his shoulders and uh, and around him and he huddles up next to the fire and okay okay okay. i I stay with him rubbing his shoulders and his back trying to keep him warm and calm him down feed him Uh, we're not gonna leave another sailor behind what if it comes down to having to hold him down and try to feed him i can't even feed himself family that's what we'll do mr sabascon oh gods do we really want to put him through that? What if it kills him? Well, not even would kill him quicker. He well, might, maybe, I don't know. He might just be doomed either way. Oh, he's just a lad. I understand that. Uh, look, this whole situation has gone from bad to worse to completely fucked up. I don't know what the fuck we're going to do. we got a bunch of children on our hands now. It's our responsibility to make sure they're all right. We have to try to help him. Even if it doesn't work out, we can't just give up on him. Fine. You're right. This, all of this, is Clemens and Garside. They were co-conspirators from the very beginning. You always keep the cook alive until the last possible minute. So, it would have been one or the other if they weren't conspirators. And I don't believe that they are with us anymore. And to be fair, if they are, or one of them is, we should be able to handle it. I mean, look how rough he is. They can't be looking any better. I think that it would make me sleep a lot easier if I could see their bodies. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. I'm usually not... I'm usually not one for wanton murder, but I do believe in vengeance, as you all know too well. 
I understand. But Roland said that he traveled a, a week to get where we are. I... We're five days away from winter. We have to we have to hunt this beast. Get back to the the kobold so we can get into the mountain pass to survive the elements. If we go hunting after vengeance, we're as likely as them to be consumed. No, but these are not just mutineers, Mr. Fireblossom. They're man-eating mutineers. And they can turn good lads, like Mr. Stonebridge, into beasts. I'm not saying that they don't deserve a retribution. I'm just saying it, it seems as though the land is capable of doling it out. Yes, exactly right. This is why it is a taboo, according to legend. The land, the land itself will sort it out. Uh, I mean, look, we, we know where we have to go. We know where this flower is. If this young lady here is, is, is comfortable bringing Roland with us to her shelter, we at least have a place to stay if we need to once we look for this, start, start looking for this flower, right? Mm. All right. It's at least it's a, it's a place where we can stay for a few days if we need to, provided that you're all right with that. Honey still has her arrow locked uh -huh. and has not let her eyes move away from Roland in the time that you've been talking. Queenie, you can hear his whispers. I miss my dad. I miss my dad. During that entire conversation they were having, I would have kind of slowly moved positions with Roland and sat down with him and kind of gotten him into a laying position where his head's on my lap and I'm just kind of like rubbing his hair and his I head. I miss my dad. And kind of talking to him a little bit. And then I would say to him, Roland, you, can I tell you a story? Why don't you close your eyes? I want you to imagine something for me, all right? Can you do that? His eyes don't close. And you realize as you are petting him that he's no longer breathing. Well... That makes it a lot easier that I don't have to snap your neck. And I'm not going to tell anybody, and I'm just going to keep rubbing. I'm just going to keep um, playing with his hair and wait for him to die. So you don't tell anyone that he's not breathing? Nope. Honey, honey is watching you pet him. <laughs> with great suspicion. I mean, this is why I ask. I, I just certainly don't want to make her uncomfortable. Look at how she's reacting to him. But we, we do need to take him with us if we're going to give him a chance. So that's why I'm asking you if it's alright if we take him with us to your shelter. Without looking at you. Alright, uh, well, things are tense right now. It's alright. Uh, everything is going to be fine. We've survived for months in this land. We've We've experienced the visions of the land. We are here for a reason, Mr. Yornir saw it. We saw the, uh, Mr. Uh, Secundus. Mm. Aye, the, the, the metal man. Uh, this is all part of the same thing. If, if it's the land that's doing this to Mr. Stonebridge, can't you say, land, please stop doing that to Mr. Stonebridge? Yornir, isn't that what- Do you think that I control the will of the land? I don't, don't you commune with it? I commune with the land. The land speaks to me. I do not tell it what to do. It tells me what to do. Are you fair enough? Can you like maybe make a polite request? I'm just a pilgrim and the land is my guide. Bonbo, stop pushing. This is the angriest I've ever heard you on here. He might he, snap. He committed the great taboo. He did not intend to. It was a trick. It was evil that this happened. But it is not something that I can undo. Maybe the maybe the great dragon has the ability to. Not that I think that she would help, but if anybody could, if anybody can harness the power of the land, maybe she can help. Oh, even if she could, Mister Fire Blossom, if she abhors. The weak, 
and those not fit to survive. And I'll just look over at at Stonebridge, and then I'll then back to Taishan. I need everyone to make a perception check. Um, <clears throat> while they're having this conversation, I would be, you know, I'm like rubbing his hair, but I also want to have like a finger where his pulse would be. Um, and just waiting for, I know he's not breathing, but waiting for that pulse to slow and then stop. And then waiting just a couple more minutes to make sure it doesn't start back up. You have your finger on the pulse and you're continuing to sort of... But I, and I'm talking to him so that every state. time they look over, it looks like I'm just telling him a story and I'm describing the glade that I came from. Oh, <laughs> he would have enjoyed that. Yeah. And God. would have that's past tense. That pulse, uh, by the time you notice the breathing is gone, also is non-existent. The strangest thing, as you are looking down, is that as you are brushing, the hair itself seems to be turning from its hazel brown color to white. Small patches here and there, starting to sort of spread and blossom almost like uh, uh, to use an anachronistic uh, visual uh, sped up version of uh, like mold or, or, or something like that expanding in, uh, on his head. It's not that fast, but it is uh, faster than it should be. Uh, what was everyone's perceptions roll? I got a 24 with a natural 20. 18. 18. Do I need to roll one as well? 11. So I'm not really paying attention. No, I'd, I'd say that you will be very in tune with what what is about to be perceived. 11. 11? 12. 12. Uh, it's about to be perceived? What do you mean? Bar- Barnabas, you guys are, have, are, are deep in conversation. And uh, Taishen, uh, Scrim, you hear it before you see what's happening. This sort of, almost like a, if you took a leather belt and sort of like stretched over, like when a bow bends, mm. it's got that creaking sound, and mm. you can hear it mm. getting louder and louder from the lap of Queenie. This seems to be emanating from Roland's body. What in God's name is happening? What is that sound? I'm just gonna, like, turn towards it. Queenie, is he okay? He died. What? A few minutes ago, he died. But now his hair is changing, and there's a sound coming from his body, so... Maybe. A few minutes ago? The yeah. already gaunt body starts to twitch and spasm that leaps out uh, just uh, just uh, out, 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 out off of your lap and thins. It continues to thin to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulls tautly over its bones, a strange and eerie stench of decay and do- decomposition, of death and corruption, creeps onto, into the cold air. The smell stirs a manic fear inside all of you. Roland's arms and legs protrude out from his sleeves and pants, lengthening and stretching. Sharp claws pierce through the end of his fingertips and through the leather of his boots. His hair turns snow white as these claws themselves turn into pure ice. You see the bleached bone of an animal skull pushed out and force its way, pierce its way through the flesh of his face. Terrified eyes, gaping mouth stretch, tearing away impossibly the complete skull of a caribou beneath, warps and mutates forward. Somehow there is no blood, just bone and teeth and empty eye sockets. From between its jaws, a long, pointed, yellow, scaled, and peeling tongue emerges and lolls out from its brand new monster mouth. The convulsing body finally stills as the metamorphosis comes to rest, when suddenly the creature springs into undeath. It arches its back and raises its head to the sky and screams, It's so loud. I need you each to roll a 1d6 for me and take that amount of thunder damage. What the oh, and fuck? And then I need you to roll initiative. Let's fucking go. Do I know, does uh, you know what a uh, oh, Wendigo is? Wha- hmm? Does you know what a Wendigo is? Uh, m- not by that name, per- perhaps. Okay. I took four damage. Oh, I took max damage. I took, <laughs> Holy I took, shit! I took five. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Just, yeah. Man, this guy wrecked us already. He came uh, out swinging. When, when you say caribou skull, is that antlers included? Uh, there don't appear to be any immediate antlers. Okay. No immediate antlers. No immediate antlers. I got no immediate antlers is the name of my memoir. <laughs> Oofta. 
This is going to be interesting. I got an 11. I'm ready um, to fucking just pop right, off. Right. Shoot a couple oh, press yeah. digitations I've, at him. I've had a uh, trick up my sleeve for a while that I'm ready to oh, I don't got no tricks. I'm just going to I'm going to do something flashy with my sleeves and then nothing. I'm in them out. <laughs> All right. Uh so that's every that's how it's combat now. Oh god. Can do it. Let us make some combat. The um, Wendigo, having sprung into life as it has, uh, immediately leaps forward, clambers to its feet, its head goes <laughs> and turns upside down, looking out of its head and its mouth uh, completely upside down, its arms now moving almost like a spider. It races forward. Uh, it's going to jump forward and immediately attack uh, Honey. No! Oh my god! <laughs> Wow, honey has a... Just the old annual and mini. Oh. Its initial, uh, she was ready. Its initial swipe uh, uh, immediately comes down, but uh, <gasps> it hits with its second attack and uh, manages to slash at it, at her, doing... Level four. A considerable amount of damage. It goes in for a bite and misses it as well. Uh, as she as she pulls back, you can see this huge, these icy claws that it, it scrapes down across his, uh, across her chest. Uh, her her very minimal amount of the warm clothing uh, and weather appropriate was not much in uh, in terms of like armor class, and so she uh, takes the full brunt of this uh, at- attack um, and screams. If she could, a breathless air sound coming out of her mouth, uh, without the ability to produce uh, sound like she uh, like she is, uh, she doubles back and, and, and starts to point up with her arrow. But that is the conclusion of the Wendigo's surprise-ish turn. Uh, Queenie, you're up. Um, I am going to look towards it, and I'm going to cast Entangle. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> and it's in a 20-foot cube, but it's like over in this area, so it just clips it on the corner. Um, and so out of the snow, you'll see these beautiful, like, fey vines with beautiful purple, yellow, blue, pink flowers. Hell yeah. Um, all of them humming with these magical bees, um, as they twist up around the Wendigo, and it needs to make a, uh, strength saving throw. Does a 21 pass? Yeah. So nothing happens, but it looks beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you all That's watch cool. as from the um, uh, the dirt and the snow and uh, uh, the ground of this forest floor, these roots emerge. Um, but it is uh, clambering forward, uh, its tongue lolling from side to side. It is clearly um, after the human of you first. The- oh. Uh, Barnabas, I got him, I got one. one. <laughs> I'll look, and you'll see like a single tear roll down my cheek. Oh, no. And I'll say... I'm sorry I couldn't do more, lad. And I'll look at uh, Honey and I'll say, Get away from that young lady. You are not Mr. Stonebridge. And I'm going to swing my anchor, run up as barnacles uh, encrust uh, on me. And I use a bonus action to rage uh, to then recklessly attack with my anchor. Please hit, please hit. That will probably hit. Um, That'll be a 23. That hits. Uh, and so I will. I get to do two D. Oh great! Four plus nine, nine, eleven points of bludgeoning damage. I like it. I am then going to use my crusher feet to just uh, abs. As soon as it smashes into uh, the Wendigo, I'm going to use my strength to smash him back five feet away. Okay. From uh, from Honey. Uh, in, I guess, this direction. Nice. And then I'm going to s- go run in between the Wendigo and Honey, the last of my movement. Um, uh, it falls onto its back and immediately springs around and turns over, <clears throat> making this in- insane sound that uh, uh, is almost as deafening as the original piercing str- scream, but um, you're now getting used to the ringing in your ears. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and that's my turn. <laughs> um... You could see uh, uh, Honey uh, reach down uh, and 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 go for a melee weapon, but having done what you did, she requivers and notches and attempts to uh, loose an arrow into this foul, cursed creature, and she's gonna get a natural two. So that is the conclusion. It, it goes wild. It's 
the arrow just flies off into the tree canopy, disappearing into the night. Uh, that's the conclusion of her turn, and it's the Wendigo's turn again, and it's going to turn it's and... difficult terrain. It's, it's difficult down. terrain, uh, but it's so furious at the initial hit that Barnabas gave, it's going to uh, dig into Barnabas right out of the gate. Oh. Um, Advantage. Oh. <laughs> that's a donkey. I've never gotten a rage advantagedness. Uh, let's do these. I was hoping to crit. Oh, a one and a two for its uh, first claw attack. Maybe that hits? Uh, that's going to be a 27 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close. Uh, that's going to be um, six points of slashing damage and uh, nine points of cold damage. Oh, I'm resistant to all of that. And it's going to go in and <laughs> attempt to bite you with its uh, st- growing mouth. Ew. And that's going to be almost a crit. Uh, so that'll be, that's definitely going to hit. And it'll do uh, 15 points of uh, ne- piercing damage. <gasps> Okay. Okay. As it digs into you, it it, it chomps at you, it slices at you. Uh, You can feel these impossibly sharp uh, icy claws dig into you, and you know that it's cold. Uh, But even worse is when it bites down into your arm and starts to hold on to you like a dog playing um, tug of war. That'll be the conclusion of this turn. You're in the ordinary, you're up. Um, I will. Seeing that it's going to town on Barnabas. Be careful, this thing is evil, this is not natural. Uh, I'm gonna walk up and I am going to uh, all sort of utter uh, an incantation in giant and you'll see some of the runes that are hanging from my person kind of glow and I will cast runic ward um, on myself, uh, which means that when I get attacked, I can do some force damage back to them. Um, nice. And then you will see, sort of in a flash of almost like a Laura Borealis color, Ooh. I transform into the shape of a bear. <laughs> Let's uh, go. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, stat block wise, uh, it'll be a black bear, but I'm thinking it'll look more like the ice claw bears from Dunmoro. So they're kind of like a gray. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, it's a brownish gray. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Grayish brown, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and I'm gonna basically charge at it. My immersion very is very important. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm out of turns, so I'm just gonna basically try to look menacing and help Barnabas. Okay, you do that. Um, Fuck yeah. Scrim, you're up. Oh man, um, this change. Well, I don't think this changes anything. I'm gonna go for it. Uh, I'd like to look around and see if I can find uh, just somewhere in our camp area, like an extraordinarily large rock. Like maybe a large boulder the size of a small boulder. <laughs> <laughs> Make a um, perception check. Incredible. Thirteen. With a thirteen, you see, you find a medium-sized boulder. Uh, it was uh, just uh, next to that tree over there. Roughly how many feet of, uh, across? I can't remember what the different tiers are. What are the? It's only tiers? one through six. Yeah, yeah, but the one is like one's two, up to one foot, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six. Oh, uh, then so I would say the middle six. of the line, three, three to four. Is that is that how I can let me take a look at the? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that works. That works. I'm just deciding whether or not it's worth it. Literally, yeah, that's what you do. Okay. It's like a really big uh, beach so, ball. So as this is happening, I'm like looking around, I'm panicking, sweating, even though it's freezing. Uh, <laughs> And, I, and I, I find the rock, I put my eye, I, I set my eyes on it, and I hold my hand up and I say, You bastard, don't fail me now. Bonobos, you're on here, heads up! And I telekinetically throw this rock as I use Hurl, the spell Hurl Rock. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at this Wendigo, and so you see this three to four foot boulder, it's this large boulder the size of a small boulder, uh, <laughs> like whiz past your head at this thing, and I'm gonna make Almost a raised like spell a attack. It comes in at, at, at an arc, as if something, uh, uh, your telekinetic energy, uh, slams into the bottom of it and sends it spiraling up and out towards this Wendigo. So I can just use the plus six as my, that's my spell, screen spell Correct. attack. Okay. I hope this works. I really hope this works. Eh. <laughs> twist it! We're twist it! We're twisting it until it hits! We're twisting it! We're twisting it until it hits! I want to see what this fucking spell does. I will use... You can only I'm really, it's pretty oh, good. Right. Yeah, no, there's a cap! Oh, I, should, a cap. I was just gonna use one. 
Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just use one. Uh, okay. Come on. Come on. I forgot this is ice. The one. dice gods will speak here. Uh, uh fifteen. Just hits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So your plus should probably be higher. Uh, well, we'll figure it out. We'll take a look. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so if it hits. It'll do 2d10 damage because of the size of the large boulder, the size of small boulder. Yep. And then there's a 50% chance that it will shatter into shrapnel. Ah. Uh. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, 14 points of damage. Yeah, really 14 oh, points wow. of bludgeoning damage as this rock uh, ricochets <laughs> off of uh, poor Roller. <sighs> it, the, okay. right, the stone slams into it and uh, perhaps breaks apart. Even odds? Yeah. Even it shatters odds it does not? Sure. Or you could flip a coin. <sighs> Seems very oh. screamy. <laughs> oh, I should flip the coin. Uh, 100, it doesn't shatter. Oh, what the fuck? That's a bad coin to choose. Yeah. It's basically <laughs> yeah. the same on both sides. Oh, you could've got him. Shield, it's it very, doesn't very shatter. Move. This thing, it shatters. Got it. Okay, I got my... Yeah. Oh, nice catch. Shatters. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone within a ten, uh, everyone within ten feet just has to make a deck saving. Oh, no, I'm advantage. Uh, that includes um, the Wendigo or the no. Well, that's a great question. Doesn't say. What does it say? It, it just says all Wendigo. creatures within ten feet of the impact must make a yeah. dexterity yeah, saving that throw. That technically means the Wendigo. Yeah, the creature takes half win. damage on a failed throw or a quarter much on a successful. What's the DC? I'll take half. Um, it, that's not in here. It would be your spell. Yeah. Spell DC save. I will take a look. My spell DC is 14. Okay. Uh, she fails, it succeeds. So the total damage was 14 to the Wendigo. I pass. So you only take a quarter of that. Okay. How much damage? For a quarter of 14 if you pass. Okay. Uh, th four? Three. Three. And three. Three. Oh, round down. Yeah. yeah. Um, this explosion of rock and, and debris in all directions um, uh, hits uh, Honey uh, uh, directly, and um, she is not looking good. She she's actually looking very One rough uh, already uh, just from from Jeez. these uh, this initial round of combat, let's say. Oh, uh, I was hoping Barnabas would soak most of that. Everyone else uh, <laughs> gets pelted with uh, uh, rock and and shrapnel. <laughs> ah, I got him. That's my turn. Taishan. Um uh, as, as Roland explodes into a giant fucking Wendigo, um, I, I just light up my, the, the ends of my fists and say, uh, this place is fucking crazy! Uh, and fire out um, three uh, scorching, I'll cast Scorching Ray nice. at level oh, yeah. two. Nice. Um, you drop into horse stance. Yeah, I drop into horse no, stance. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I drop into <laughs> open palm stance. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I fire out three uh, scorching rays, and I think I roll for each one. Yep. Um, plus six. So 16. Battlehead. 22. Come on. Oh. And 21. Nice. All three hit. So maybe um, extra damage since it's fire. Uh, I, I Did you take the elemental adept fire feet at level four? No, I took the metallic dragon. Oh feet. yeah, that's bad. Yeah, I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> you want to save the elemental adept for later? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds pretty gangster. Um, <laughs> pretty gangster myself. That sounds pretty gangster. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good. Two of them are. Two of them are. Uh, <laughs> Perfectly average. Thir thirteen, thirteen, and then... Seventeen? Seventeen oh, points of fucking good. Yeah. flame damage. Seventeen? As I chuck And now he's a fire his, when to uh, go. Yeah. That's total? Yes. Uh... Uh, okay, um, the first blast hits it and sprays across at embers flying in all directions. The second hits, the third. Um, it doesn't seem to be doing more than you would expect, but it does seem to uh, uh, be causing a great amount of rage as it screams again, looks at you, and continues to look around like a panicked animal. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't enjoy that, Roland. <laughs> 
You made me do this. Um, <laughs> the air is filled with this disgusting smell, the smell of decay and corruption and rot of the taboo made manifest by the evil acts of the um, cabin boy Roland and of the crew itself of the Moribound. The kill, the caribou that you had, suddenly starts to shiver and shake its limbs coming back together and it like a newborn fowl starts to stand and 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 and, and get up to its uh it, it's to its legs its eyes glowing with impossible energy as it too raises into undeath springs even and starts to fly towards the nearest creature suddenly a cursed and corrupted caribou body <laughs> oh we were eating it and now it's gonna eat us oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> this was the fireplace yeah probably i'm gonna put it right here and yeah that's I'm, a good place for it it's far gonna, away from scrim as possible get, uh it's gonna race towards queenies at a gallop suddenly sprinting oh, sprinting forward god, I don't know uh, I if you can oh. move the, the move it in Oh, this is fucked up. I'll put this. This is a block of vision. <laughs> and it, it's going to attempt to ram you. Oh. Uh, that's going to be a 20 to hit, dirty that 20. Does it. Uh, it does four points of bludgeoning damage as it slams into you. Did it move uh, at least 20 uh, feet before it hit you? It did not. No. Ten, 10 feet. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's all it does, but in addition, Taishen, Queenie, Scrim. Seeing this caribou come to life is Wait, how horrifying. many points of damage did four, you say? Four. four. Oh, okay. Seeing this creature come to life is horrifying. Seeing it ram into uh, or attempt to ram into uh, Queenie to try and trample her is a nightmare. Knowing that this Wendigo is causing undeath is starting to come together very quickly for you, and it's especially made clear as the winter pelts around your back start to tighten and oh, constrict sh- no. and, the fuck and, up. And, and hug into you. They're not like normal leather. This is uncured. We had just shorn this off of a wolf a few months ago. They too uh, seem to be trying to <laughs> smother you. You damn son of a bitch. Oh my god. In there. <laughs> Three rugs of smothering join the battle. <laughs> Uh, 21 to hit Scrim. Um, what the hell? Yeah, that hits. Okay, you are grappled and you take nine bludgeoning damage. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, I regret this immediately! Right in. Uh, that's a natural 20. No, what? Uh, uh, that's going to be 11 bludgeoning damage to you. And Queenie, uh, that's going to be a 14 to hit. That misses. Okay, so it, it, you can feel it tightening, uh, uh, oh attempting to... Cover you. Oh, but you little shit! I killed you once. I'll kill you twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and for that, well, this is bad. We need some wolf pelt beans. So uh, you've got a bean. You you've got, got a bean. bean. You've got a bean. You know. You could have given me a lot of guesses about what, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what was uh, about to go who down. is joining the battle yeah. uh, for confirmed for Smash, and I never would have guessed Wolf Pelts. It's a very Smash move to play. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, that's the conclusion of their turn. Top of the round, Queenie, you are up. Um, okay, I am you are going. Grappled. I I am grappled. Um, Didn't it miss you? Or is it you're still grappled, just not? Oh, if it missed, it missed you, her. then it is, you are not grappled. Yeah, oh, perfect. Apologies. You're clear. So I'm going to use my rabbit hop um, and jump 10 feet backwards um, away from the caribou. Okay, I'm going to assume that you uh, uh, leave the pelt behind. Sure. <laughs> I can. Um, the, the, caribou, the caribou will use its reaction to try and, and get at you. Uh, I rabbit can't. Hop, rabbit yeah. hop can't provoke opportunity attacks. Beautiful. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty sad. Uh, it would have um, missed anyone. Um, and and then i am going to uh look back and forth between the two of them and i'm going to suss out that i think the wendigo needs to go down first and i'm going to turn my arrow towards the endigo and i'm going to let loose a bolt do it um and you still have all your movement left right huh in case you need to move later you still have all your your movement yeah i have all of my movement 14 just misses twisted I'm gonna twist, twist it. it. Do it. Can you pull a twist out of there for me? Oh, sorry. I, I'm, I'm reading my abilities. Yeah, yeah. These. Yeah, I, 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 I miss. I'm more centrally. 
as the story was not yet made. Um, you miss with your uh, twist, and uh, it sails very close to everyone in the immediate vicinity, but you can hear it uh, hit one of the trunks in the nearby uh, forest. Is that your turn? That's my whole turn. Barnabas. Oh. Uh, I am going to uh, turn to Honey, and I'll say... Young lady, get as far away from here as you can. See, magic will help you, and I will, uh, this would have happened when I raged, but I will then uh, stick out my arm in a similar motion, a crab, massive crab claw will appear, and I'm going to uh, uh, snip twice into um, the Wendigo. Snip twice. It's, uh, it's AC is 15 now that we've completed uh, it. That'll hit. Citizen snips. <laughs> that'll also hit. Uh, Get the clients. <laughs> so this, it, so that's basically. Oh wow, that's really bad. Uh, three plus oh, but plus ten, thirteen plus four, uh, thirteen, uh, seventeen points of uh, slashing damage. Nice. As I'm. <clears throat> um, I you continue rage. to, to, to uh, are you using, you're not using your anchor, you're just literally... No, no, so I basically am holding it up like in a, in a defensive motion to, to get uh, Honey away, oh, and then I am uh, then just going for like the, the uppercut with my crap. You course. clamp around its yeah. neck and it upside down head continues to move around frenetically uh, uh, and uh, you can hear its attempts to scream almost between the, the claws before it is able to wrench itself free but you clearly did uh, 17 points worth of damage to it uh, that is What's up that? to Honey Honey has agreed to take your word for it um, how uh, entangled is she to try and run She's not entangled at all. Oh, you didn't get her at all? Yeah, it's the corner. So, so like, yeah, he it's was, basically... It's just our boy got flipped. <laughs> well, it's, it's Bar- Barnabas is now in it, but... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Rather than re-quiver, uh, uh, take another arrow from her quiver, uh, rather than go for the beast, uh, she's holding her wounds, um, uh, some from uh, debris and others from these uh, impossible scratches that have happened across her chest, and she turns and dashes away. Uh, her speed is uh, 30, so she takes the full... I mean, she'd be like way out yeah, of she's, she's off. The, Do you want her to be like basically out of the fight? Yeah, I mean, do the number of squares that is sixty. It's like off the map. I so. know, but she's uh, she runs into okay. the, she right. runs into the forest into Just the. Put night. her on the edge there. Yeah, so it's literally right there. Yeah, okay. Uh, you works. hear her footsteps getting quieter and quieter as she disappears between the trees, uh, out of sight almost. Uh, and that'll be the conclusion of her turn. It's the Wendigo's turn. Uh, what are its options? It has a bear to its left, it looks like, yeah. and Barnabas. <laughs> It's a black bear. Yeah, bear to its left, Barnabas in front. He said, you know, I found documentary once about when the ghost. <laughs> I read it in the documentary. documentary. <laughs> this when the go has gonna go. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Gino. Um, I wish Gino were in this campaign. This, this newborn uh, cursed being, this thing that has suddenly emerged uh, in front of you, having finally um, risen from uh, the dead, um, gets down as low as possible to the ground, and uh, using its inhuman abil- uh, mobility, it's going to attempt to chase, not any of you or attack any of you, but to chase down honey. It will oh, disengage so. with a bonus action because that's something it can do because it has inhuman ability, uh, mobility and is going to dart around and attempt to, to, to get to her um, using its full action to move. So that's like three, right? So with, with this movement? 40. Okay, so, uh, so he's disengaged three, that way. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I may have made a mistake. So, mm-hmm. is he dashing for, uh, for his action? That's what he's doing. Okay. It disappears into the night. Oh my god! And you guys watch as it's so like, like, like a like a like a camel spider just uh, immediately just uh, just camera, jumps just... Uh, jumps into the darkness. Uh, clearly hungry for its prey. This is fucked up, Derek. What the hell's wrong with you? I had a lot of time during the pandemic. <laughs> to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you can get a That's not an excuse. You're sick in the head. 
<laughs> I think uh, we need S in the chat for Lady Silence here. Yeah, she's Holy toast. Shit. There's Lady nothing we can Silence. do. She's and, actually toast. Uh, Yorner, uh, that's uh, that's you. Oh, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, ooh, this is a very... If you go into the woods today, you're... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're <surprised>. right. <laughs> he's probably not a person, right? I probably can't hold a person. He's definitely not a human. Uh, he's anymore. elevated from person into something else. Give me another teddy bear. My guess... A story and I can be convinced. <laughs> My guess is either... I don't... I mean, monstrosity, undead, or aberration. Would be my guesses. I'd lean toward that. Yeah, I think aberration's a great guess. Uh, medium, he, medium undead. Oh, undead, um, undead. He sprang into undead. Yeah, but yeah, but I thought that could have been that, artistic. Yeah, to me that was like a, I don't know. I would I would put money. She's on a aberration. badass thing, sir. So. Yeah. I don't even know what an aberration is. I thought it was like yeah, a summon. The, the, the definition of the definition of an aberration is pretty loose in D and D. Yeah. Like in WoW, that'd be very clearly like probably an like a ghost. You have 60 isn't seconds isn't to comply. You are really? okay. apparition. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I guess I'll just try to... My speed is 40. So I'm just going to turn, and I'm just going <laughs> to... It's the very first cinematic for World of uh, Warcraft. The bear chasing <laughs> in the snow. <laughs> the dwarf ranger. <laughs> I, I can basically get on this side of them. Oh wow! So I'm gonna I'm using my action to dash because I I'm a bear so I'm a little faster, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try to get in front of him to stop him, uh, and go. <clears throat> You're able to um, sprint as a bear, and you almost keep uh, keep up. This creature is like jumping from tree to tree and oh. uh, making its way, and you can see. Uh, through your dark vision bear eyes, that yeah. the, the uh, it, sure. it's, it's all black and white. Uh, it's it's completely dark in all directions, but uh, you can see suddenly the figure of Honey come back into view, and this creature is just about to jump onto her as the end of your turn comes. Scrim, you're up. Um, I will have yeeted the rock, and uh, I am I'm wearing this fur, which is already big on me, kind of looks like a pimp goat. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, all right, I'm all out of rocks now. I, where's everybody right? <laughs> As it fully engulfs me, uh, and I'm grappled by this thing. Yeah. Am I able to attack? I believe you can attack your grappler. Just a disadvantage. You just can't move. Yeah. Just can't move. Yeah. Not yeah. just a disadvantage. Just can't move. Okay. Um, so I'm choking as this the, the 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 wolf pelt will engulf me entirely mm -hmm. because I'm just so small. Amazing. And uh, when I realize that this is happening, I will uh, produce the brutal blade from thin air and attempt to pierce through this uh, thing that is choking me out. Ha! Oh boy, I'm not rolling very well tonight. Uh, that's a 17 to hit. Uh, and I, we never made this determination about your pelts, but in my mind's eye, they're the kind of pelts where the head is starting to like, like look around and ah! like the right eyes. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you stab up and into its chest or neck. Uh, and because I'm pissed that 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 my my pelt is attacking me, uh, I will use Fury of the Small uh, to to deal an extra four damage to the creature, <laughs> if, assuming that it's a sort of size larger than me. Uh, it is medium. Yeah, so it is. I'm Fury of the Small. Uh, okay, and uh, so that's gonna be 3d4 plus 4 plus 4. Damn. That's a Fury of the Small. <laughs> oh, let's go. That's not too bad. That's gonna be uh, 8 plus, plus 8 is 16 points of damage from the Brutal Blade. I would say that you actually start at the bottom. You grab the bottom of the pelt as you were being enveloped, and you just basically unzip it like a tent. <laughs> it, it splits It splits into two and falls lifeless on both sides of your next three from this creature. You can remove the bean. Uh, DM? What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I thought there were no zippers. <laughs> what the so fuck? Using anachronistic. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know the setting that well. <laughs> it's my whole turn. That's funny. Um, I'm like stomping on it as I as it falls to the ground. I'm like stomping on it, and you can breath. see that it is lifeless as you do that, Taishan. Um, I what? What's what's up? <laughs> 
Um, and uh, as it's choking me out, um, <laughs> I would like to. Um, hmm. Barnabo says, God, I wish that was me. Yeah. Oh, it's just like a party at oh, yeah. <laughs> It's just like a day that ends in Y at uh, somebody's house. I believe I did um, hit you, so you are grappled. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. grappled. Uh, I would like to. Uh, I'm going to try and, like, inflame my body and, uh, like, burn it off me just by casting Firebolt. But I'd like it to be cool. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, by basically I don't super think it needs to come my... from your hand. Firebolt can come from anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of like if you've ever seen somebody, uh, like, <coughs> those those micro fleece blankets when you light it and there's like this cool shimmery fire that, that happened. Your whole body <coughs> does this and you attempt to. Investor uh, flame the... level sense belt. <coughs> it's, not, it's, it's more like the Captain Falcon taunt and smash. I just go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it gets on flames. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Roll the hit. Uh, cool. Sixteen. <coughs> oh, uh, oh yeah. The... Oh, it was a D10, D10 look like. It's like the weird one. It's the one that's the percentile dice. Oh. This one over here. Got double no, numbers no, on it no, or something. Yeah, there you go. Oh, shit. One has this euro on it. Five. Nice. Five damage. Um, Five it, flames. It ignites into damage. flames. Damn right and, it does. Uh, <laughs> even though it's trying to grapple you, um, the, the nature of the flames being what, what it is, the fur goes up <laughs> almost yeah. instantly, and it falls to ashes around your feet. I rip it in two, and it swirls in half and disintegrates into ashes. It in does the, that. In you the can air. remove your beam. <gasps> nice. It's like the Dude. head looks like a really terrible taxidermy. <laughs> yeah. Like, little fox where it's like sitting. <laughs> yeah. Do you want that? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the... The bean is on the ground over here. Yeah, that's the one that... Need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just and disgustingly, that, yeah. Um, <laughs> it is able to move. And no. whatever pieces or chunks of this uh, flap of wolf flesh is left, it starts to worm forward, and even though it has only a movement speed of 10, it is able to get to Queenie. <clears throat> it's going to attempt to unwrap her once again in its smothering, pelty goodness. <laughs> and that is going to be uh, 21 to hit. That is. That's going to be six bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled. Okay. Oh, what, I, was, what was this thing? That's the, that's the prison caribou. caribou that we were... Either oh, eating or about to fuck. eat. Can we? Yeah, not good. Can we quote smothering pelty goodness? To... <laughs> uh, the caribou is going to run into Barnabas and this time attempt to trample him. Uh, that's going to be a Ed advantage. Oh, thank you. Uh, fishing for a twenty there, but no, it's a, net, a dirty twenty. That's uh, more it than hits. enough. It's going to do uh, six points of bludgeoning damage and an additional. Seven points of bludgeoning damage because it's using its charge feature. You need to make a strength saving throw. That's where I'm a Viking. Is he cool? I didn't move. I'm at advantage because I'm raging, right? Yeah. Can you guys move? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's me, though. Just put your the DC is 13. <laughs> I got a 10. So you blow it out of the water. A, a t no, I only got a 10. Oh, you got so a I got 10. A I got to roll the 1 and a 3. Yeah. You, you <laughs> are <wild. laughs> You watch as a bear disappears into the night following an undead creature of cannibalism, a nightmare for what it's worth, following honey, and you do not expect it. As I just suddenly turn around. The caribou <laughs> rams into you and you push over onto your back. Uh, you can feel a rib crack as this happens. Oh, oh, and, holy great Neptune! Uh. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it clearly is continuing to gallop, but in this moment, time is frozen. That is the conclusion of its turn. The monster's queenie, you're up top of the round. Okay, um, I don't really care that my pelt is still on me. I am going to try and shoot the Wendigo. And yeah. I have yeah. Yeah. range. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty yeah. in range. Yeah. This Wendigo? Yeah. yeah. Damn. The, the range is um, like fierce. Like yeah. Saying. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a 27 to hit. Oh, uh, that's big shit. Time. Uh, tracking through the forest. You that's can't even fuck. see through the dark, but you know how animals move and you lose eights. your arrow to hit. I fire with my heart, not my eyes. Uh, oh, you shoot with your mind. Yeah. 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 Uh, eight points of damage. And bees explode out of the arrow. And <laughs> no, that, that is actually true. That actually, yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah. As the arrow makes contact or finds purchase on the Wendigo, mm -hmm. bees explode out of the arrow <laughs> and swarm around it and to begin to sting into it, doing... 
three more points Love up here. That. Oh, yeah. I was joking. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So I'm setting the scene here. The arrow <laughs> pierces the Wendigo, and then a single bee floats down, and he looks at the Wendigo and says, you like jazz? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're unable to move because you're grappled, but you were able to do that unbelievably well uh, shot uh, in shot. <clears throat> Uh, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? That's my turn. Barnabas. I love that. Barnabas. Oh! Nicole. Brain boss. Uh, it's my turn. <laughs> Am I pinned, or did I just get knocked prone just, and now I'm able to? You're on your back looking up at the, uh, trees. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look around. I'm gonna see that Honey is being chased by the Wendigo. I cannot get there. There's a giant creature. I see the queen he's shooting at. So I'm gonna say, <clears throat> All right, beastie. You need a dog, uh, Mr. Yorn here, please save the young lady. And then I am going to uh, <laughs> just, I'm going to uh, look up and I'm gonna leap up into the, uh, onto my feet with my claw first and just attempt to choke out this, uh, Let's go. this elk. Thing. Give it a taste of its own this medicine. Caribou. Um, that is going to be 18 to hit. Going to attempt to choke out this elk. That'll be a natural 20. Oh, oh let's go. go. Do I get any kind of like critical yet, or is that like at a higher level? I mean, uh, you can double you your dice at least. Oh. Gotta give it up. That's right. Um, attack rolls against the creature. Critical. Uh, well, yeah, no, Yeah, but, brutal crit. Yeah. Oh, right? never mind. I think you roll an additional damage. Yeah, I, I can't use my crusher because it's the slashing damage. Oh, well. Uh, so I'm going to roll uh, three dice. Oh, wow. 12, um, 12, 15, uh, 25, 29 points of slashing damage to the elk as I stand to my feet and I, uh, with my anchor in one hand, and I'm just hacking into this uh, elk. It takes a lot of magical energy for you to enter this form, certainly, but it occurs to you that this is even more effective than when you're normally carving and cleaning a kill because you go through its neck like butter. It clicks like Ew. this, and its head lolls and falls to your face, nice. and the rest of the body holds for a moment before tumbling over in a, in a splash. Um, the caribou's gone. You can remove the token. Very good. That's it? You keep what you kill. Thank you. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. Oh, it, yeah. Uh, that's that it's, That's your there. turn. Honey is up. <clears throat> Honey turns around, sees the berry she trusts, and the... <laughs> Wendigo is just on top of her. If it's possible, I would have tried to get in front of like both of them a little bit. Like, I, I don't want her to keep running. Right? No, no, no. So no, I would no. try to use body language to be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, and I will say, mm. in, instead, she'll take a book, uh, a page out of the Wendigo's book, and she will use the action disengage. Oh. And she will um, get low and then sprint back to the campfire where there's a oh. where there's a source of light. Uh, she will not provoke any attacks of opportunity, but can only move the thirty feet. Uh, that is the conclusion of her turn. That goes to it. Yeah, well, that's too bad. So the Wendigo uh, will chase if you want to take an attack of I opportunity. Will. Uh, let's see what happens here. The rage of the bears. Let's oh, oh my god! god! The land speaks through me. <laughs> he, he goes into bear mode. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Wendigo's done. Uh, so as he runs, I'll get up on, on both legs and I'll come down with my claws. And that's 44 plus 2 is not bad. 44 points of damage. Uh, your <laughs> League of Legends fans know what's, uh, what we're talking about. Uh, Udyr's model still exists in the game. Uh, what a nightmare. Not for long. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 12 points of damage. That rain is almost over. Yeah. Rip lock it. Yeah. Uh, you could. It's it's difficult to say um, because it, it immediately pulls its leg out from uh, your mouth. Uh, but you bite down, and you can feel um, flesh now like paper uh, underneath, bone uh, almost like wood, and it disappears out from uh, uh, from your your 
mouth in, in, in a moment before chasing after uh, Honey and attempting to claw and bite her to death. Where would the Wendigo end? He has plenty of movement to like get a- around her. Oh. Uh, I would say it just gets directly behind her. Right there. Yeah. Cool. It's kind of like a she's running beast. Yeah. She's running. She doesn't have time to look behind her. Yeah, she's toast. Oh, I actually can stop rolling. It jumps on top of her oh, and fuck. starts to consume, and you don't hear a scream. All you hear oh. are the crunching of bones, the sound of meat being devoured, the sound and crunching of uh, 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 of, of claw that this creature is frantically tearing it out. And as it does, it's getting faster and faster at it. It is continuing to swallow and, and, and consume. Uh, it is very clear that her legs go limp for uh, uh, in, in this moment, and it lets out a ha! scream into the air as you can see the, the vitriol pouring down out from both sides of its mouth. She's probably not doing okay. Uh, <laughs> you can turn her mini. Do I get, and... a, do I get a cyst gold? <laughs> <laughs> and I just need to make some mechanical notes here. <laughs> the one that goes like, I'm yeah. in rocks in this shit. <laughs> it's um... more fun when they run. <laughs> and that'll be the conclusion of its turn. You're near, you're up. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll immediately gallop over one. Oh, God. You're galloping as a bear? Well, you know, they do sort of like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, just so I understand, she was right back towards Eloping? the campfire. Yes. So she, they, oh, this yeah, is not like doing. hundreds of feet distance as they no, really turn around. No, this is the actual okay. right. distance. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Um, so I'm going to run up, and I don't know if I can quickly glance down to see how she's doing. Uh, uh, make a quick medicine check at disadvantage because of the frantic nature of combat. Mm. Uh, it's like a. Oh boy. Oh, actually, don't don't do it at disadvantage just yet. You know, uh, I saw a daytime doctor show. <laughs> I'm kind of a doc- medical professional myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it was the soap opera. Featuring Doc Case on my court. Bunch of doctors <laughs> and nurses fucking each other. <laughs> you're you're within five feet of her? I yeah. am. Okay. Um uh, we're gonna follow the fucking rules and the guy. Yeah, let's handbook. do it. I, I think I have a copy right here. And so uh, everyone, not including chat, not including Rich, have to close their <gasps> eyes so I can indicate what is happening. Oh, to, she gets death saving to throws. honey. Uh, all right, just one moment. She's a special NPC. Chat, do not reveal what information has been passed upon you. And uh, now you may all reveal your eyes once again to the situation. God. Let me just real quick. I feel like I'm playing, uh, what is that game? Seven up. Thumbs up, seven up. No, what is the the murder mystery with thumbs <laughs> no, poison? Oh, oh, that's right. There's a there's a rat in this in this, <laughs> this in this precinct, and this badge don't mean nothing. <laughs> Doctor Poison. Um, My uh, Fitbit just told me it's time to get rest and go to bed. Oh yeah, fuck that. Shut the fuck, the fuck up, Fitbit. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm with it. Uh, I will look down at her and I will turn up to the Wendigo and I will come in with a multi-attack. I will bite. I will attack with my claws. So, let's do this. Oh! Uh, they both hit. Um, it's got them icy blue Oh, uh, my apologies. Uh, having uh, consumed flesh, <gasps> its AC is now 17. Ah, oh, fuck! Okay. You're still on. good, though. Yeah, I should still be good. Yeah, you know, you're definitely good. Yeah, 18 is my lowest roll. Okay. Okay. So that is one, two, three. Jutes are great. I 13 points that. of, uh, I think it's all uh, piercing and slashing, if it matters. We good. Thank you. Um, and I would just, yeah, I would just try to stay in its face and, you know. Shit. Yeah, sure. Uh, Scrim, you're up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I cannot believe I'm gonna do this! Ah! <laughs> and I'm gonna run at him, and, uh, as I'm running at him, I'm 10, 15, 20, <laughs> 25, 30, oh, my short? I can go, like, at an angle well, well, you, from you here. Should I should be able to, to go, like, yeah, at an yeah, angle. Yeah. If you want to help me out calculate yeah. it so I'm not stupid, I'm going to Hexplate's Curse it. 
as I'm running at it with a bonus action. You do that. And then attempt to swing in uh, with Do we the hear like blade. a big, like a hound? Like, bay? Um, <laughs> I, would I would say, like, say, how does that, what does that look? Yeah. I would say as I'm screaming, like, I'm, I'm doing my best, like, war cry, because I'm uh -huh. scared and I'm running in, uh -huh. you would definitely hear some sort of a, like, a baying, like, <gasps> but almost like you're not sure if you heard it or not. Is it the Wendigo or is right. it something you don't, else? Yeah, you're not sure, yeah. you're not sure. <laughs> and I will attempt to make an attack. Um, you were near being a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm pretty, I'm feeling, you know, we so just So what do I that. get? Yeah. I get, uh, against the curse target, I gain plus two damage rolls. I think that's it. And if you hit a 19, you crit, or is that? 19 crits? Yeah. Get a 19? Damn, no. That should still win? No. I only have like plus six. That can't be right. I have plus six. I don't, yeah, I don't know why it would be less oh, than the melee okay. attack, yeah. right? Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at stats. Um, okay. That's gonna miss. I only got a 12. That misses. Yeah, that sucks. I'm not rolling very well tonight. Uh, Tai Shen. All right. Um, I will uh, cast Elemental Burst. Whoa. Um, make a ranged spell attack. When a successful hit, the target takes 1d8 piercing and 1d8 fire or magical bludgeoning damage. Uh, so. It was a roll to attack it. Uh, its AC is now 17. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I twist it? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. one time? Sure. I don't want this to explode. It's what they're here for. Face. Oh, you got them. That's what they're here for. <laughs> From 1 to 20. Let's go. Oh, yeah. oh, gotta give it up. Thanks, Jack. Unbelievable! All well done. Thanks, you, Jack. Holy Thanks, Jack. goodness! You get a natural twenty. Double you buy dice, me a Tashi. Yeah. Mm. Tashi. Um, yeah. So just double the dice, right? So yeah. I'll double. Um, I'll do this one for. Is that four? I'll do this one for fire. Shit. Why did I give you all these cool things? Listen, you fool. <laughs> um, Is it production uh, perspective? One, are we good to AC it up? Oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah, getting yeah. warm. Okay. <laughs> I am quite toasty. I took my sweater off an hour ago because. Turns out combat's pretty sweaty. I've sweat through my chair. Well, now that it's not as quiet. It's We're gonna enjoy sweet. some special ramen. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's all about the waffles. Oh. It's, sweet. it's very he's getting very yeasty over here. Uh, <laughs> I want to die. Twenty twenty one damage Woo! and thirteen of it is fire, and uh, the other amount eight is piercing. Like magical piercing. Okay. Isn't there a shaman ability where it, like it switches between elements, like a little? It's called elemental burst. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that's why I mean, it's like literally called yeah. elemental burst. Yeah, literally, you elemental just, yeah, shaman. And you yeah. fire, and then all of your magics like imbue, yeah. like at your flame shot. You yeah, do that, and it turns to you as it, uh, and and you see it try to scream, but now nah, try try to scream isn't the right way to put it. It does scream at you, but the voice that comes out of its mouth is the sound your ear is making. He's screaming, and it makes this mimic sound of the creature that uh, is attacking him. Oh. 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 We're all just screaming. Yeah. <laughs> you want to show, okay? Or a pool of blood? I can't tell from here. Everyone's blocking my sight. Uh, I would. I mean, I'm a bear. Both <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> You're all Run right, once if she's fine. <laughs> Queenie's grapple, yes. Okay. Oh, I, I keep forgetting this. Uh, like, it's going to do additional grapple damage to you. It's going to do min minimum damage, four bludgeoning damage to you, and you continue to be grappled. And that looks like the end of its turn. Queenie, you're right up. Um, I'm going to fire at the Wendigo. Um, it's slowing down even as its manic uh, uh, panic is, is occurring. Double check. You want to share with Scrim your status? Hmm? He's in five feet. Oh, you are in five feet. Um, if everyone will close their eyes for me. Oh, so I automatically get to know. As I soon as you're in five to, feet range, you get to, to you get to know. And now we can return to our normally programmed uh, schedule. Um, uh, twenty-three. Oh. Hmm. 23 points of damage? No, 23 to hit. Oh, shit, I was about to say. Great. <laughs> um, I have to use another one of your d It's moving oh, yeah, like yeah, a bee! Yeah. <laughs> I got these, too, if you want one of these. These were good to me. 
If I this increase the volume of the music, is it gonna hurt this? Uh, I can adjust. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna go a little higher. Yeah, so. I could use a little bit more. Uh... Oh damn! Oh my gosh, the boss is low, and that's when the music intensifies. <laughs> yeah. Round two. Uh, six <laughs> points of uh, piercing damage, mm -hmm. and then it explodes into bees for an additional four points nice. of uh, damage. Let us know if the music is too much or too loud. But yes, please. Should, it looks the levels look good. <clears throat> okay. Um, the bees are uh, surrounding it um, uh, very, very much like a hive. Uh, they, they're crawling oh, all man. over it, going in and out of its <gasps> open skull mouth as it is continuing to swing around. Uh, it'll look left and uh, bees will fly off and then immediately come back and continue to, to do good damage, good work. Yeah. Good uh, work, Barnabas, uh, it is uh, your time to shine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am going to see... Uh, 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 uh. Do I have any sense that uh, Honey is going to be... Uh... Okay, actually, no. I am going to move. I'm going to uh, look at this and move as far as I can. So wait, hold on. My speed is 30. So, two, three, four, and that's it, right? That's t 20, right? Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no you're right, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you should be good. Uh, I am going to try to skirt it as I will um, look at the Wendigo uh, that's trying to this uh, eviscerate uh, this poor helpless girl, and I'm going to say, now, you get away from her, and I'm going to inhale on my pipe and uh, let out a great uh, bellow and a massive gust of wind is going to erupt out of me as I'm going to use my Triton ability, Gust of Wind, <laughs> to just bl try to blast the Wendigo uh, uh, away uh, from okay. from uh, Honey. How does that work? Can you read so it? So it, will, it will need to make, it's at the beginning of its turn. Oh. Uh, it will need to make a strength saving throw. So it's 60 feet long and 10 feet wide. Does and so it also affect the others? I'm going to, if I can aim it in a line, basically, you'll feel like a gust near you, but I will be but trying she's to- she's in this square, right? Yeah. So theoretically you can like, clip yep. it. Yep, I, I want to basically take Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, snow rises up in devil-like uh, tornado shapes. They, they, they uh, fly forward and you make this enormous uh, uh, bellow that does exactly as you said. Yeah. Uh, that Little smoke rain. That's your uh, turn. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that. Yeah. That's all I can do. This is a Honey's turn. Move. Yeah. And that. It's means turn. Today. Uh, it's going to turn to. Good night, Ren. Good night, Ren. Good night, Ren. Thank you. It's good seeing you. Hope you're feeling better soon. Uh, get some rest. It's done in gorging itself on honey for now, oh. and it looks around and it sees a beast. That doesn't taste very good to a Wendigo. And it turns to Shut the Grim. Fuck up. <laughs> I know I'm leathery and my skin is very taut and I don't have any meat on my bones. No! First claw attack is a 17 to hit. I'm gonna have to cast shield. <laughs> oh, shield, shield, shield. okay. <laughs> so I will, uh, uh, cause I'm screaming as I'm trying to hack at this thing, it and I see that it comes down in, with his hand. and and I I almost see it in slow motion, and uh, I still hear that that baying in the back of my mind, and all of a sudden a fiendish purple shield uh, almost will just for a quick flash as the claws bounce off. It goes in with the uh, uppercut of the. Oh god, I'm out of spell slots. Uh, definitely doesn't make it through its shield, so it, it it tries to nom on and through the the shield to see if it can pierce through with its jaws to see if it can find purchase. My AC is twenty two oh, nice. for nice. the remainder of this round. Twenty one. The Ooh. shield. Oh. Oh. Holy shit. Uh, and that is going to be the conclusion of the turn. You're near, you're up. The shield starts to crack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, you know what? I'm just gonna... My apologies. It has an additional action it's gonna use to bite again yeah, because of the nature of consumed corpse, which I oh, thank Jesus. Nikki for very Another much. Attack. I'm oh, very confident oh. my shield will hold. It's a ghoul from Warcraft 3. 23. <laughs> oh! Uh, can I react? Wait, did you get a 23? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he hits. 23. 
It's so uh, eleven yeah. points of piercing. I would damage. I would like to react and quickly shore up his shield with golden scales, which would bump his AC an additional two points to twenty four. I love it. <laughs> Thank God, it would have been a devastating eleven points of bitey, but uh, and it, it you see the teeth pierce through, and the, the blue shields start to shatter and disappear, and just as it's coming in, almost like blossoms, golden scales seem yeah. to come in, and <gasps> clap, it air, narrowly from your nose before it pulls back and starts to look for its next purchase. Well fucking done. Let's fucking go. That's the metallic dragon feet. I can add two, oh, so I can funny. react and add two AC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's its turn. You're near. Oh god. Slapping <laughs> 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 it rip again. Another natural twenty. Oh, oh my uh, god. And fifteen. Somebody stop this guy, but don't misses. actually. Fifteen mi- misses. Right? Miss yeah. Okay. So. Thirteen points of damage. It is trying as desperately as it can to uh, get into the shield. Uh, it's snapping its insane, impossible, upside-down jaws, and it is inches from uh, Scrim, its next target's face, and you reach down. How do you want to do this? Oh, oh I just want to... Uh, I see it like, like Scrim's on the ground, like... Ah! And I just want to basically like hit it with both of my claws... And then just like bite it somewhere in its head, and whether oh it like God. hops the skull, beast on or, beast. Combat. Yeah, I just sort of like I want to yeah. use my my jaws to like finish him off. And You're able to uh, almost like a uh, adult cat picking up a newborn kitten, get around the scruff. But <laughs> this is not a, a gentle act; it is a violent <laughs> act as you cr- uh. Uh, bite around its. Uh, uh, spine. You can feel the discs in between your mouth and you pop it off and the skull goes flying off in one direction and its body immediately goes limp and slumps uh, splatting out its arms and legs in all directions. It's uh, it's very uh, claws almost immediately turning from ice into snow and melting away as it, uh. as, as it collapses. <laughs> oh gosh! That was close! I will immediately shift out. I will forget that I cast Gust of Wind. <laughs> <laughs> the body just starts blowing. <laughs> ah, Quinny, look at that! I'd say, I'd say the, the the wind hits it, and it does turn twice and, and, and comes to a lulling stop. <sighs> what happens to the pelt? Oh. Uh, it continues to grapple at you. Oh. Yeah. Um, it hits, and it does an additional... Uh, five points of damage around you. Uh, what do you want to do about that problem? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I take it. If I don't have this, if this pelt doesn't stop fighting me, I'm going to die from the cold anyway, so I might as well let <laughs> oh, it Oh, no, I burnt my pelt. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to freeze to death. Hmm. Mine's in tatters. <laughs> to shreds. It is occurring to you that the cold is coming in, and at a certain point, let's say now, the pelt <laughs> does go lifeless and start to fall off of your shoulders and you are free to run to your allies and, and, and become one with the party again. The night goes silent and you are all standing there and you see the, the motion of the Wendigo has stopped. The caribou seemingly now once again a fresh kill. Uh, the pelts that were on your backs, Taishen and Scrim, are on each on the floor in tatters. Your uh, health is what it was, uh, un, un, un damaged. You look at each other's eyes, uh, one of you, one set being a, a pair of bear eyes, still, I think. No, you tried to yeah, shift it back out. out. Yeah. Uh, and you're all staring at each other. Only the flickering light of the campfire illuminates this space as you realize the immediate threat is now over. What happens next is up to you. <laughs> oh, oh geez. My god. Wrong playlist. Oh my <laughs> god. The immediate threat. Um I'm gonna call out. Yorni here, how's honey? How's honey? She alright? No. 
gonna need a little bit more than that. She's dead. I uh, just walk five more feet forward to see how dead. <laughs> you can see that she had been uh, eaten from behind. Uh, you can see through. <laughs> it's Sorry, 22. I mean, we eat ass now. It's the closet maneuver. <laughs> when do you guys eat ass like groceries? The Wendigo's name was Butt <laughs> It's confirmed in Derek's uh, Can we call uh, that? You Wendigo's look up into the sky and you can see <laughs> Ellis. <laughs> Nice! Nice! I'm gonna coo! You know, at least the Wendigo and Honey, everything went out of You know? You couldn't really ask for much more than that, you know? She went out like a hero. Oh, Jesus! It turns out the real friends were the asses we ate along with. Oh god. 2022 folks. It's yeah. a horrifying image. Yeah. You can see ribs broken and torn away. You can see the the what what, what would have been uh, her intestines, her organs all strewn out. It looks uh, like huge, they enjoyed huge themselves. Bites uh, taken out of each. Holy shit, Mickey, that's funny as fuck. And uh there's there's no way that a human, uh, any of you would be able to survive that amount of damage. Uh her heart is not pumping, the blood is still, it is a dead woman. So it's not like your <laughs> wounds would have been able to like she was utterly no, like eviscerated. Yeah. 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 Derek gave us the Oh the, what? Uh, oh that's so cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool, yeah. That's so cool that I didn't know. Uh, yeah. 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 Um we should burn the remains. All the oh, remains. Yeah, that hurts. I just think I, I inhaled some rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you know, you, you think it's gonna land good. It doesn't, it doesn't land so good sometimes. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the caribou corpse uh, and <laughs> Are you talking about the Wendigo? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Don't clip that. I did. No, no. We're gonna watch that one. We are gonna watch, watch the that shit one. out of that. Uh, I go over to the caribou <laughs> corpse and I want to drag it with the Wendigo um, and honey and just sort of try to make a pile of flesh and bone. To seeing seeing your near take these actions, pulling the hooved feet of the caribou across the, the forest floor, uh, bringing Honey over into uh, a, a serene and relaxed position next to the uh, emaciated body, uh, this thin body of the transformed Roland. Uh, and uh, it is obvious that he is looking to send them on their way. What are the rest of you doing in that moment? Um, I would just be sitting like in the snow on the forest floor like, absolutely stunned that I almost got eaten by a went to go. Uh, and you can't think of a time in your whole life, your whole goblin life, that you've ever had something <coughs> so, so uh, almost tearing into your flesh, uh, uh, killing you. This was this was a terrifying experience for you. Could have been me. Taishan, you saved me. Thank God you didn't bend over. <laughs> my, my, uh, my goblin ass is... Wait, you're pretty for prison. <laughs> <laughs> Tight and cute. And you were in one. <laughs> no! I repressed all of those memories from the old man! Fight back to me now! I've been walked straight in a month! <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All those fishing chips and barnabas! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's all coming back to me! <coughs> do you oh, assist? Uh, what do you say? I, I would I would walk up. No, I'm too stunned to assist. Yeah. I would walk up and I would just be staring at the absolute carnage. They were just kids. And all this and now it's just us once again. How's that thing so fast? She couldn't get away. I've never seen anything move like that. Her running was her death sentence. There is nothing that we could have done to protect her from that. 
It was unstoppable. And how, once it ate her, did it have much of an interest in us? I think it's it tried to eat me. <clears throat> me of all, all people. My leathery skin and bones. It was going to consume, so it was sated. A creature like that's never sated. It would have consumed all of us. And then moved on to whatever else it could find. Let's hurry up and prepare their bodies. We need to we need to put I'll, these two to rest. I'll grab the, the young <clears throat> the young lady. And I'll as gently as I can pick up the remains toward and bring it to the fire. Uh, uh, I, I wanna go ahead. I was, I'll, I'll get the cloaks, like understanding they were We'll look to burn them. I'll get the like whatever's remains of the cloaks, especially if they're in. Uh, there are a few strips, uh, yeah. tatters, that sort of thing. You're able to collect them up into your arms. And, I'm wearing mine. <laughs> um, yours, yours still being whole, it continues to provide you the protection. But you can feel the chill already starting to hurt uh, as the um, uh, under zero weather of, of the coming winter. Um, is already starting to now, now that combat is done uh, your adrenaline can only hold for so long and in only a matter of minutes you can feel that biting cold start to seep into your bones but the strips of wolf pelts don't come alive in your arms you're able to put them next to or into the pile that is being assembled sure. pile it up um, I want to search her body for any kind of like knickknacks or anything that she might have on her that's not just like clothes. Uh, you find the bow that she had on her. She um, had furs on her. Not armor. Not like what you would normally adventure in, certainly. Nothing like uh, leather armor or anything like that that's been shredded and, and no longer usable. Uh, she had underneath one um, uh, connected to her belt a cleaver. Uh, a meat cleaver. And uh, you can see that she had uh, a good number of arrows, um, probably about 15, 16 arrows. I take all 16 of those arrows <clears throat> on her bow. You do. And... If your near will allow me but, to. But yeah. nothing like a uh, trinket like or... Like or like a ring or anything like that. She was, uh, <clears throat> as you saw her, without, without any artifact like that. Um, when I notice what you're doing... Yeah, yeah, I will be very public about it. I'm gonna get use out of these arrows because I think we're gonna need them. But I think the bow will suffice to prove, if we ever find her, to her sister that we knew her, and that we at least cared enough to bring it back to her. Yes, I agree. It was Clemens that did this. <clears throat> I don't know who it was. Oh, he's the quartermaster. After they killed the bosun, he would have been in charge. I will <clears throat> collect some fuel. And I just want to sort of go around and if I can find any kind of like dry wood that I think will burn, sort of just place it around the the, the bodies. Um, place. Just wood. I just said so that it kind of helps burn it all. It's easy to find the kindling needed uh, in order to start the fire. And very quickly, you all watch as the bodies of the caribou, of what was Roland, of the nameless mute woman that you called honey, starts to ignite and burn. And the smoke, uh, without any real wind, uh, straightens and goes up into the abyss of the sky. And you continue to watch just to make sure, just to make sure this Wendigo is truly, truly gone. And it doesn't jump out of the fire, it doesn't reassemble and become a, 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 or regenerate and become another uh, a threat once again. Instead, it persists until the fire burns down to embers. There is an artifact, something left over. You can see where Roland's body was, where its heart should have been, a clump of 
what looks like ashy ice. I'll reach down and I'll grab it. You're able to pull it free and gingerly touching it should be hot, but it is ice cold. And you immediately feel the thrum of arcane energy in your fingers as you touch it. This is some kind of relic, something that was born of whatever curse made this creature. Holding it, all of you look at it, emboldens you. You're able to stare at what Bjornir is considering in his hand, and what fear you felt, what violence you just felt in combat, you know that if you look upon this object, that it could steal your mind against fear. Mechanically, you enjoy <coughs> the ice heart of the Wendigo. What the fuck? Is that in... It's not a thing that I've added, oh, no. But it. mechanically, uh, if you reveal it, you allow creatures with the fear condition to take another wisdom saving throw to end that fear at advantage. Nice! Or give advantage to their next wisdom saving throw against fear. Regardless of the outcome of that saving throw, they can't benefit from that vision of this artifact for another 24 hours. <clears throat> Interesting. You're part of the... I'm adding it as an item so that we don't forget, but we should add it as a... Yeah, let's add it for real. The uh, ice heart uh, of the uh, window Homework window. style. It's <clears throat> approaching the witching hour. It's almost three in the morning, and you're all exhausted. Uh, not hungry but very cold and the rest of the night is laid out in front of you and the decision that you were pondering just as you were starting to get into your camp and pull the blankets over your head before Roland was reborn comes to you again do you go to sleep or do you make a new choice where do you go from here I think we need to have a talk What do we do now? Uh, I'm worried there's more of them. I mean, at least we know what to expect, but they could be anywhere. Didn't the... were they kobolds? Yeah. When we were with them, didn't, didn't they make a mention of burning the dead? I vaguely have, like, some memory that somewhere we were told to burn the dead, and we were just like, whatever. Let's say yes. I can't remember that exact moment, but you know, that might have been in the back of my mind as we were RPing, so I'm gonna give that to you, yeah. Okay. Well, those kobolds, they didn't they didn't expand upon it, but they did mention burning the dead, and I wonder if this is why. That anything that dies here could turn into one of those things. God. It is. So we need to be more careful. All those pack you've been fishing? Those could have been Wendigo pack. I do not know if any corpse can end this way. But I'm sure there are stipulations. It is a custom from where I am from. Burning is quite common. With that being said, Honey, may she rest in peace, was the only way that, the only information we had on how to find that flower, or how to find her sister. We don't have that knowledge anymore. So what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? I mean, we, we, we would have had to look for it without her help. If we'd never found her in the first place, we can still look, at, we just might not be successful. Well, we know that it's in this forest. She would have known exactly where to go, but we, we knew we had to look through here to find it in the first place. Now I know what I'd like to do. I'd like to find that flower. Find this young lady's sister. Make sure we shepherd her with us. Kill the beast. Pledge to the Dragon Queen. Survive the winter. Get her to whatever home she knows, and along the way, bash the skulls in of Clemens and Garci, whichever one still draws breath. Or die in the attempt. 
No, stay the course then. This is a fair path forward, and I agree. The, the sister is surely doomed without the sister, without Bunny. Because she, she, we know she was older, and she was going out to hunt to bring them both food, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> it's a younger sister. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they didn't quite. So, we could leave and continue on our way, but we surely doom her. We brought this fate upon her. Had her fate not intertwined with ours, she would be alive right now. It's very possible. I say we look for the sister as well. She's lost her father and her older sister without even knowing it. I know what it's like to not know whether someone's okay or or not. The not knowing is crushing. We We should give her that at least. And we aren't sleeping tonight. Press on through. No, we should rest. Yeah, we should, right? Trying to find the sister, we don't, we have a rough direction. It it is unlikely to find it in the dark. We sleep until sunrise, then we can begin our search. As you come to this final determination, a snowflake comes down, and another. And then another. Pretty soon it's obvious that a storm is here. That it is beginning to storm. And a flurry turns into a full blown snow starting to coat all things, shielding the dark night of sky with a overcast blanket of gray clouds. You start to make your way to rest, and Taishen, Scrim, you miss those wolf belts. You'll need to make constitution saving throws. I'd love to. Oh, oh, oh. there it is. Natural 20, so I got a 24. That's not enough. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I would be not uh, shot in the slightest. Uh, 16? It's enough. You enjoy the warmth of the campfire oh. and just huddle that much closer to the embers. <laughs> Whatever you think of before night, before sleep takes you, you think of. And you all enjoy the benefits of a long rest. Woo! <laughs> Christ. <clears throat> mm. The next morning, you wake to a bright day, a bright morning, but it is snowing heavier and heavier and heavier. When you wake up, you have to push your blanket aside or get out from underneath your tent to discover that there's already six inches of snow on the ground. It's coming down that hard. And you have to decide how to make your next choice. Uh, Breakfast is served. You have to pick a direction. You remember the gestures Honey provided, the the ways she pointed. Seems that her sister, this settlement that she would describe with her hands, is very much in the direction of west. And perhaps you'll find a bush along the way. What you do next? I believe west is the little direction that we will go. But just look for the bush <coughs> on the way. It seems like that's where she came from. Queenie, do you think you would be able to track back to where we met, honey? And maybe see if you can find anything there that would 
give us clues as to follow, like, trace her steps back to where she came from. Well, I can sure try. It's been snowing all night. It's going to make it a little more difficult, but it ain't impossible, that's for sure. So I think it's a good place to start. Oh, you lead the way, Miss March. All right. Well, as long as we're all packed up and ready to go, I say let's head into the West. And while we continue... I'd like to use whatever herbalist knowledge that I have to get a sense of, like, where a bush, based on what's been described, where a bush might grow, and, like, try to be thinking about logically where it might make sense to kind of, oh, like, maybe, you know, that little patch over there might have this type of bush that might grow flowers, something Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So just You got more information than we are, Pete. Uh, I imagine that you actually would have really dug into yeah. uh, the nature of the plant, the the look of it, what fronds it has, the exact quality of the yellow, whether it has four petals or five. Uh, all of those kinds of qualities that allow you, because the difference between four petals and five might be the difference between poison and medicine yeah. to, to someone like yourself. And uh, so you are picking up on those clues, and I will say that you journey. Uh, for hours looking. Make a nature check as we do. And uh, you, I'm trying to remember where we left the sledge. Are you still carrying a okay. sledge of rations? Yes. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you can make it through the forest, um, I've been dragging it. Importantly, you got rations from the caribou that Queenie fell, but that caribou was rotten and, and burned away last night. So, uh, Subtract what rations would have been added mm. from the caribou of yesterday, if you if you added it to the sledge or added it to your pack. Is that a seven? Oh, that is a seven. I don't know that I differentiated from. The, yeah, I'm not I sure did. that we did, so I'm gonna leave it. But it's a, mechanically that should be something that's happening at this time. But I didn't think to math that out. Ten. <laughs> uh, ten. Um, it's getting harder and harder to identify shrubs <clears throat> from any other environmental element, aspect, terrain, uh, as it's covered in snow deeper and deeper. By the time you reach the end of your trek for this day, a full foot of snow has, has landed. And for the three of you, Barnabos, Taishan, Yornir, it's a foot of snow. Mixed trudging along getting a little more difficult, sure, but for you, Queenie, and for you, Scrim, a foot of snow is a third of my thigh height, height <laughs> maybe even hip, yeah. It is not a little amount of snow, and there is no sign of what's, what's stopping. Uh, Yorner, if you cared to druidcraft, you'd be able to see that this does not seem to be something yeah, that's okay. going to uh, conclude in the near future. The, the, this, will, this will be again for uh, perhaps at this current level or perhaps stronger for another day. And you guys reach camp, a point where you cannot trek any longer unless you choose to march and, and continue on your path during the night. What do you do? Does Queenie get a sense that she's found any kind of trail mm. of... I didn't have her roll for that. Survival. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's um, big. That should be pretty good. Twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-one. With a twenty-one, your keen rabbit eyes spy a arrow, and you can take it and pull it, and it is a free arrow. Not only that, but it is of the same make as honey's. You are clearly on the right track. The, the, the direction that you're heading in, maybe we're going to need to veer left or veer right, but you feel that you've not passed this lodge or settlement or or whatever it was that honey was describing but you know that you're getting closer to the place where perhaps the sister is or perhaps wherever the settlement is but it is time to make a camp and to enjoy a campfire that's what you are doing in this moment i think we would camp right yeah Yeah, i would think so out of character i've got a few more of these uh candles how many Got it. got a few. Well, we're also in the boot. I mean, pres- I'm hoping we can save any fuel we have for, like, while we're in the forest. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Just letting you know. uh, while you're in a place things. where you'd be able to snap branches off of small, medium, and large plants and twigs, uh, I'm hand waving the fuel requirement. Thank goodness. Mm. Freezing my ass off over here. Uh, yeah, so I think we just try to, like, sleep, you know. 
a, a minimal rest and get up in the morning and keep trekking west. You eat, you enjoy the benefits of a long rest. Tyshan and Scrim make a constitution saving throw. Rations. Eighteen. Twenty-four. Why don't you both roll again? <gasps> oh, yes! Dude, you just get dreaded? Jesus. You just got dreaded. Double dread. How dreadful. Eleven. I also got eleven. <laughs> the DC was ten. The le- oh! Derek, you almost succeeded. You can, Holy you can smokes! Look up, you can look up our weather rules. <laughs> our very special. It's very transparent. Oh our my Patreon. God. Yeah. Very transparent. We really appreciate the patronage. Thank you. So, do we have any rations to eat? I don't have any. I have eight. I don't have any. So, because I don't have any I have inventory nothing. space. I think we. I had seven. And I think we consumed that, and that's why we were hunting for that caribou. Yeah. yeah. So we were out of food. Hunting. So your eight are probably the caribou pieces. Oh, they're just all caribou yeah. pieces? Yeah. All right. That was so zero. we're fasting. Yep. Yeah, we're fasting tonight. Um, remember what your starvation number is and start counting down. I got eight days. It is. I have to, I burned it down somewhere. It's something I, plus con, right? Yeah. I uh, I start dying on the sixth oh, day or whatever. One, two, three, <laughs> yeah. Four, five, six. I mean, seven. you can survive twelve yeah. days without eating. Six. Even. So I have ten uh, days to starve to death. Six it's days. It's not like exhaustion. you die on the final day. You, you like get start exhaustion, starving, and then you get yeah. exhausting one. And there's six yeah. levels, so it, it's six plus six. But you do enjoy the benefits of the long rest. You were able to stay warm enough near the campfire without the cold affecting you physically in a way that would be inhibiting you wake up the next morning to another foot of snow winter winter is right around the corner in fact i'm going to be remembering Isn't that it i'm tracking tomorrow the fucking, solstice uh the solstice is yeah three days it away. would have been five it was five days from oh. when we from when we battled the wendigo oh, okay okay i thought it was three days when we battled. that's the correct okay and so it is now three days away because you wake up the next morning and that snowstorm is becoming a blizzard. Visibility is getting worse and worse. Uh, in fact, I have it written down here. What's my happy analogy that I would make anachronistically? The answer is... Something's a burp something. Yep. At this level of snow, you can only see about 300 feet in any direction during the daytime at, at the, the brightest part, parts of the day during the morning and afternoon. That's like standing on one end of the foot of a football field and not being able to see the goalposts on the other side. Wow, it's further than I can see normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you trek on them. You have a good sense of what West looks like, uh, thanks largely due to your ability to always know what true north is or near. And there's little talk, but you've gotten used to hard marches before. Just one step after the other, making your way through. And it's at the conclusion of this night that you are able to look out, and you smell it before you see it. You can smell uh, wood burning. You start to make your way over another ridge past these lines of, of, of pine trees, uh, past a, a, a giant pine, and there it is. A beautiful, gorgeous structure right there. Not plopped in the middle of the forest, but built as if it would be... as, as if it was grown there. This must be it. <clears throat> Queenie, this shelter looks to you like a beautiful flower at its fullest blossom. It is shapely and curvaceous, and uh, it, it sits between two massive trees. Uh, 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 surrounding it looks like a, a plot of land, though not well kept at this time. Uh, like a, a, it really reminds you of the glade very much. Barnabas, this structure reminds you of childhood of the underwater architecture of your youth. So fluid and seamless is this design. 
Scrim, this shelter looks like shelter. Oh, thank God. <laughs> My not, favorite. Not just that, but unlike the ruined villages you've traversed, or the <coughs> creepy ship that brought you here, or the prison you once called home, or the graveyard that you once called uh, uh, maybe your bed and once upon a time, this place looks like the height of luxury. It's wow. uh, a beautiful window on one side, uh, uh, different different rooms, um, all made of wood. It, it, all of the, the um, snow that is hitting it is sliding off and, and, and keeping it pristine and perfect. Taishen, this cabin reminds you of the high-fired ceramic wares of your home, the Valley of the Setting Sun. Simple and textured, organic, handmade. You're near. This place looks like a temple to you. Whoever built this place was in tune with nature. For it strikes the balance between creation, that necessary act of will to reshape and reform the world around you, and the natural order of things, accepting that that is organic, fundamental about life itself. This looks nothing like the village ruins that you've seen previously. This is something different entirely. But the lights are on, and as the sun is setting and it is now in that gray golden hour of this storm, the five of you stand ready to approach this structure. How do you do that? I don't want to be that guy, but generally, when something's too good to be true, it is. Take it from me. I've been selling crap to people for years. Something about this isn't right. Look at it. It's perfect. Well, we've seen dragonborn structures all over the place. Why, why would this be any different? Well, what, do you, what do you mean? It, 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 it's, it's the most luxurious, modern-looking... It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't fit here. Well, it looks very much like the, the structures from my, my temple forged by dragonborn. Are you crazy? Have you gone mad? I Are you both sick? It's quite clearly a cute little cottage <clears throat> in the middle of a glade. I mean, it's not well kept or anything, but it looks nice. Cold what? even. It's like a fire-blown ceramic. What are you talking what? fire-blown? Look at all the flowers all over. You think those flowers will be growing there for or fire-blown? Not I a single flower flowers on this Flowers at all. What are you talking about? There's moss right around the door. I take several steps back. Something is severely wrong here. You look closer at what Queenie is observing, and sure enough, there's an ornate pattern that's been carved into the arch of this doorway that has a flowery-like quality. Curls and and uh, symmetry, these kinds of uh, concepts. Does, it, does that appear, like, did we not see that originally? Does that feel like that it's appeared just, it's into just that it? It's just now or? that she's pointed out that detail, it, it becomes striking to you. Uh, in fact, I'll have everyone make a history check. I don't think I'm a Viking man. Fifteen. Seven. Could be worse, honestly. Uh, Eleven. Uh, Come on, Tashi. I rolled a 16. Oh, I'm trying. I think Taishi's got the... That's pretty good. 17. Nice. Turn off the lights. Oh, yeah, we can, we can bump them back up. Kind of like... Yeah, yeah, we can keep it. I mean, it's Whatever. Yeah. Um, I like the vibe. Taishan and Barnabas, you're the two who yeah. have some familiarity with this kind of method of building. This is a wooden structure and clearly required mastercraft craftsmanship in order to produce. But... It was on your journey south, before you reached Wu Zhang, that you came across a culture similar to this. In your great number of travels, uh, Barnabas, it hits you that you've, you've been to a port side city that had some of these same characteristics. Mm. This structure is clearly of elven make. Did I know that? Yeah. Yeah, you, you would have passed by elves before you got to Wuze and, and and suddenly got swept up by the adventure that you're currently on. As new as you are to the world beyond the Valley of the Setting Sun, you do recognize, oh yeah, they, they the arch comes to a little point at the top like that. Uh, there, there's a familiarity about it. See how there's some 
more of an Art Nouveau. Yes, Classic Elvis. Yes. Art Nouveau. It reminds me a little bit of Sea Elves. You think they have land elves? Well, I've actually run into, on, on my travels down to Wuze, I ran into something very similar to this. And I think it's potentially of who, who you speak. Land elves. Pointy ears. I wouldn't expect elves to be around here. I don't really expect anything. I'm constantly surprised. Oh yeah, that's true. Do I see anything elvish? I would imagine that the architecture should be familiar to you in your centuries of life. So, for whatever reason, you were distracted, perhaps looking for more yellow-leaved bushes. But you do start to look at it, and it does start to click as they're talking about the these qualities about the the building that stands in front of you. This large, large domicile. This was not made by the same people who produced the settlements you've come across so far. The cairns. The, the ruins. Hmm. This this appears to be a unique facet in this strange and deep forest you now find yourself in. What I, of the uh, elves maybe I came across, were, were they welcoming? Would I, assume, would I like think of them as like a nice like a nice welcoming people? I'm not sure how uh, sociable you would have been in mm-hmm. your initial travels. But I would say that you would have gone to a tavern and stayed at an inn. And in those moments, they were courteous. They were uh, uh, some joyful, others simply polite, Mm -hmm. if not a little haughty sometimes. Mm -hmm. Regardless, I think that this is the only bit of civilization, regardless if it's too good to be true. I think that it's better than staying out in the blizzard. Which reminds me, Taishan and Scrim make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> no, I just probably, it part of us. You think it's gotten colder, DM? Ha. It's the same amount of cold. Uh, so. Seven. Fifteen. Eighteen. <laughs> you're both uh, stealing yourself nipples as hard as ever, but you're <laughs> fine. Yeah, like diamonds. This <laughs> <laughs> is single dwelling, and perhaps this is where the sister is staying. You can see that there's a chimney in the center, and that uh, smoke is billowing out. There, there's light in the windows. Regardless, we are capable enough to deal with whatever's inside. I think maybe uh, Miss March and Mister Fire Blossom should Miss March should perhaps introduce (laughs) introduce us first. Yeah, about that. We definitely knock. Oh, I'm freezing out here. Oh, just like, if there's like kind of elvish types, or if it's if it's a little girl, perhaps a, a rabbit would be the best first sight upon our motley crew. Now you won't hear me arguing. All right, I'll hop on over there, Tasha. You want to come? You look cold. Sure, I'll come. All right, try not to look so ferocious. Yeah, oh, that's my, not making it any better. Oh, okay. <laughs> At least hide the, the sharpest ones. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just going to hop forward uh, to the door and then I'm going to knock and call out, Hello, is there anyone in there? My name's Queenie March, Miss March, if you're nasty. And I'm here with my friends. We're looking for some uh, room and board, I guess. <laughs> Got money. It's cold out here. You see there's a small circular window um, with a beautiful design in the center. Uh, and you see very, very briefly oh, the, hey, I saw the you. face of a, of a young woman mm. uh, looking out, peeking down at you and looking immediately at Taishan and then disappearing. Oh, hey, hey, I saw you. I saw you in there. I'm Queen of March. Um, you wouldn't happen to have an older sister, would you? the door cracks open and you can see the weather, the elements uh, blow into the house uh, as it does, but you do see a young girl um, maybe 20 years old uh, pull pull her face out from the crease of the door and and look uh, in your eyes with dead seriousness. Hi, I'm Queenie March. Um, 
We've been walking for days trying to find you. We met your sister out in the woods and um, I don't know how to tell you this. We have some bad news. We did everything we could to try and protect her, but there was a beast that took your sister from this world. And I brought back her bow for you, as well as some more information that we have. And we would like to offer whatever ability that we have to protect you and to help you and to try and get you out of this place. Because your sister was sweet and you were the only thing in the world she cared about. And I promised her, no matter what happened, I would make sure you were looked after. I only knew her for a little bit. I called her honey. She was sweet as can be, you know. And uh, she couldn't tell me her name. She seemed like honey, all right. And uh, I'm really sorry, darling. I'm really sorry. She points to your friends. Yeah, it's just the it's just the five of us. It was a uh, yeah. Well, we'll explain it to you inside. It's all right. Come on. No, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna run. We're we're oh, cold. Try get, Sorry. Try to get we're real it. cold. Let's enter the domicile. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what? Enter the domicile is my new album. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, this bitch is huge. We're gonna need some space here. Oh, fuck. Man, that smells really good. That candle? Yeah. Yeah, I love that shit. Oh, baby. I don't know if it's gonna last the whole fucking campaign. <laughs> so put your mug yeah, yeah. on yeah. that corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, let me do a big bad boy. Actually, I actually won't be able to see it. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Alrighty. Uh, oh, there is but one smokes. entrance and one exit to this uh, space. I burped. This is where you are entering. Uh... Damn. Into a foyer. There is huge vaulted ceilings oh, for yeah. each one of these. Everything is made of. Did you draw toilet. a toilet, or is that a small penis? This is a toilet. Okay. Yep. Uh, so this would be where the bathroom <laughs> is. So these are these are doors right here and here, and these are open archways without doors. Uh, rug, Damn. couch, kitchen area, uh, bed, uh, stores, these sorts of things. Um, you don't see any of these things and you wouldn't have this knowledge, but for the purposes of this game, I have to give you this amount of knowledge. Additionally, the one of the most interesting features is the fireplace. The center chimney uh, being oh, what cool. it is, it actually can fuel and heat all of the rooms inside, and these can be uh, closed. So if you only want the 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 heat to go in one direction, you could do that, or you could have all three simultaneously. Um, That's so cool. Any other questions? That's a great design for option for houses. <laughs> Thank you. I had two years to look it up. <laughs> um, is this a stove? Uh, that actually is a freezer box. Mm. And uh, this is what appears to, when you enter this room, you'll recognize to be a, a huge cast iron fuck you furnace with like six chambers Damn. that you could do metallurgy in or, your, shit. or, or roasted turkey in. Um, there's also a basin for water stuffs. Uh, you can see there's even a sink here. It's not like you have running water or anything like that, but it would be easy enough to survive in a home like this for a long time. Um, this is okay, but it's not a Mikey map, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I, mean, I mean, the craftsmanship isn't really close. It's not really up to par. <laughs> but I'll allow it. You did the best. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, go ahead and use the same mini that we use for Honey uh, to, to meet uh, this new character. The five of you walk in through the door, and it actually takes whoever enters last quite a bit of brute force in order to close it again, such as the wind and the elements and the storm of snow that is outside, the accumulation now having gotten to two feet plus. But you're able to get inside, and immediately the warmth of this place hits you. You are able to uh, shed what matted snow had attached to your person. You're able to uh, 
pull off and free yourself a little bit and, and, and give yourself uh, a, a moment to breathe in, in what, what clothes you have on your person. Mm-hmm. And uh, standing there is the uh, uh, not identical likeness, but a very similar younger likeness. Uh, and you can see that there is a resemblance also to the crewmate that you shared the uh, your time on the ocean with, the first mate, Mylan. There's that same likeness in the sister that you said farewell to in this girl. And she's looking at you, each uh, holding a cleaver of her own, identical to the one that was on the hip of honey, we'll call her. What do you do? <clears throat> Thank you for letting us into your into your home. It's quite lovely. Um is there something we can call you? I know you can't speak. Your your sister couldn't speak either. Um She's surprised that we can. She the same as the her same sister as was. was. Yeah. Um well, would you like me to give you a name like I gave Honey a name? We were both thinking of renaming ourselves anyway. I'm sure Honey would have brought joy to my sister. I would happily take a new name, for my old name is less than dirt to me. Hey. Well... Why don't we call you Daisy? I like the sound of it. What is a daisy? It's a flower. It's kind of like this, and I'll show her the flowers on my hat. Not quite the same, but similar. And bees, they use pollen from flowers to create honey. Honey was super sweet because she loved you so much. At the mention of her sister's name, she trembles a little and you can see another tear come down, but I would say, I would try and emulate the hand motions that I would have seen Honey do. You're starting to try to and see, yeah. I, mean, I would I would verbalize it, but I would like clearly like you know like we were with her and I'd pick things up and okay. I'd say, uh, like you and Honey were held by no <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <I'm back. laughs> I should have done it. I should have yeah. done it. Uh, like, you know, but captors, big, big belly captors, you know, they hid you from the world. The The world is much larger than you are known. We have magic. I'd, um, I would uh, ch- use prestidigitation to try and produce uh, a small likeness of honey in my palm, maybe in like flame and smoke. Oh, so you're using the magic to try to create a minor illusion, let's call it, of yeah, the you can do, like, likeness. And stuff. Uh, oh, maybe like a flame that sort of looks like a. Like, cool. Yeah, well, <laughs> like Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. I like that. Uh, it's, uh, this is an illusory image. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 I would say you uh, wouldn't be able to produce like a figure, but her okay. face in pretty good detail, yeah. and so you're able to to produce this, and uh, it's sort of wrought in draconic energy, uh, given mm. your origin and your source of power. Mm. And she sees, uh, she sees the face. We had no idea there was anything beyond our world until Myla and our father showed back up and rescued us. This is the first time I've been outside of that terrible place. I was like you. I come from a place I didn't know other of the spaces that existed beyond. Um, we can tell you stories of what it's like, where we're from. Come come in. Sit, or... She starts to gesture all around. Um, she's not as uh, steady as her sister. She's a little bit more distractible. And so 
she went from learning that her sister is dead to trying to get you to sit to maybe running into the kitchen to start it, 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 there, there, there's a free formness to her to her spirit that uh, uh, maybe she's distracting herself a little bit about but uh, very quickly she is starting to play host almost uh, to serve you uh, here have 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 this uh, uh, we we found these dried uh, uh, fruits in the store uh, here uh, have have uh, uh, I, I was able to to cook a lemming that I caught just yesterday uh, uh, have, yeah. have have some some I'm gonna raise my hand hey, young lady uh, Barnabas Dreadway at your service you relax you are the you are our honored guest, despite us coming to your home. <laughs> you yes. show me in the direction of the kitchen, I'll cook you a nice meal. How about that? We have some scraps that we brought with us. You walk into a kitchen. You have she, a cook at your service. She points, and you look, and every pan size cooking utensil, uh, there's a wall of spices. There is a wall, a uh, cabinet full of who knows what. You just have to open the, dro- the, the, the doors. Uh, this is a stocked and beautiful kitchen. If you passed away and went to cook heaven, this would be the place <laughs> that you would be find yourself mm. had you been a good boy. <laughs> Which you had. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You're going to cook hell. <laughs> you are yeah. not going to cook There's hell. There's no ancient estuary there. Every other spice. It's actually just... A- Cook Hell's actually just a dirty McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the it's the back of a golden corral. <laughs> <laughs> that's so much worse. Oh, that's so that's much worse. Yeah. So there's actually no seasoning at all. Yeah. Oh, God. They don't even have salt. And the chocolate fountain. <laughs> <laughs> it's clogged. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god. I'll stare and there's a twinkle of beauty. Uh and I'll just look and I'll say I think that we can stay here for a little bit. I think I'd like to stay here for a little bit. And I will uh, just, I'll, I'll gesture to the group and say, make sure she's not trying to do any work. You say that in a particularly ominous way? What? <laughs> I'd like to stay here. <laughs> I'm in, in awe of the beauty of the kitchen. So I'm going to basically just start opening taking account of everything and reorganizing it how I want it. <laughs> Without asking. You take out the yeah, yeah. canning jar after canning jar. The classic uh, elves doing it all wrong. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, you've got your own system and you're making this place your home almost immediately. What are the rest of you doing? Uh, the second that I stepped foot into the uh, the domicile, I found the uh, campfire, the fireplace in the center of this uh, thing. I immediately beeline for it. Uh, strip down to my underlayer mm-hmm. and am drying my clothing. I'm, I'm off. picturing you in a red onesie with one of the butt flaps. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, uh, and drying all of my clothing out and just I have completely made myself at home. And oh, I'm yeah. not naked, but I am down to like you know. Skivvies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and just in front of oh, each of one of these, oh. each one of the openings of this fireplace, and right now all three doors are open. The fire is burning hot. Uh, you're able to. Uh, there's a luxurious fur. Uh, not just like a pelt, but like a, a made carpet that has clearly been like master crafted that you can sit down in. It almost is like a, if <clears throat> if a fur could be a bean bag plus what are what are those ma- memory foam like like it, it, like you're just able to like sink into oh, it. It's oh. I, I, I will uh, have very clearly made myself at home. And uh, I'm overhearing the commotion in the kitchen as he's re- reorganizing things, and I just kind of say out loud to no one in particular, "Ah, oh, yes, uh, I live here now." <laughs> <laughs> and I don't move from in front of the fireplace, and, and I'm just letting all my you've been fighting die. off the full the cold the cold cold for two days. It's fucking negative fourteen degrees outside, and it is no longer negative fourteen degrees anywhere. I'm never leaving. Join him. Uh, I would probably find somewhere that's just sort of off to the side in some seating area, and I would take the tusks off my back, and I would 
sort of respectfully set them down, and I would put all of my, you know, various gear that I'd carry on myself. You'd probably do that close to the entrance, I would say. Oh, yeah, before, sure. Before you enter, I mean, you could do that here, or you could do that in the living room, where the rug and the couch is. Um, there's, a, there's a wide I'm open space where here. you can do, enjoy that, and in that same space, uh, you notice the beams. The beams are, are hanging a variety of different plants. A huge variety of different plants. Not just plants that you would expect to see in Drakkar, but plants that you have seen only traded from many other places in Avantra. Uh There are... Ah! Yellow flowered branches on this one. Am I tall enough to grab it? You, only you are tall enough to grab it. You notice those things. You notice those things. I'm trying to help you. Um, you notice those things at a glance, and it's almost like there's such a calm wave of relaxation just entering this space because of how swimming it is that you look up and you're like oh yeah that's that's the thing that we need hmm. and you take your t- tusks off and you continue on your way they have, oh, a mammoth, they have a rack for mammoth tusks very convenient <laughs> i'll put my staff against the wall I, yeah I, I would i probably wouldn't leave it at the entrance i'd want it to be a little more like in the in the house so i'd put it just somewhere against the wall and i would this is what why is it why are we booting up a computer right fucking now? Fucking Dun Mora. <laughs> no, get the Dunmore, fuck out of here. This is my favorite song. <laughs> no, this you is have deleted. to admit it's been deleted. Will... Every single time it I hate like it. like it. I hate it. Every, Every single time. time. This is my favorite part. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to reach up and, and take some. Uh, sure. and, I'll, and I'll go up to, to uh, what's her name? You're able to pull it down. Daisy. It has Daisy. this it has this uh, uh sugar. <laughs> Um, oh, sugar? Almost like a sarsaparilla root beer smell. Oh, just, gosh. Just, just what was described to you by the kobolds, and you know that you have the correct number of petals. May, I have these. This is what we are looking for. We found all of this stuff here. We stumbled upon this place after escaping, leaving our father behind. This is a happy accident. We... When we came here, it takes a moment. There was a ancient dead guy in the bed, <laughs> and oh. it, this had all been here for a long time. I mean, look at how <laughs> dusty some of these shelves are. We we've only been here for a short time. Well, uh. I have only been here for a short time. I see absolutely none of this because I'm not looking at her. I, but I hear you mention the flower. I, you only why? We, who, who cares? We don't need it anymore. We're not leaving. This is perfect. We don't need to go kill this bird. We can just live here forever. Yes, yes. Just never leave. No, this is not. What this the is the reason why we are here? This is basically heaven. You, you can't be serious. We're not leaving. You guys are yelling at each other from across yeah. the room, and it's only audible because of the space made possible through the fireplace. Flowers be damned! <laughs> and hearing this commotion, Taishan and Queenie, what are you doing? Uh, I think I would have, like, upon walking in, I would uh, probably sit within the vicinity of Scrim, just, like, on the edge of the fireplace, mm-hmm. um, and lay my teapot out near it, like, kind of towards the fire and kind of start to brew a pot of tea. Um, I think as if I can see her motions, like if this conversation's happening in this room, uh, I, I think as she mentions that there's a there was a dead guy when they got here, uh, I'd say, "Where's the body?" What body? What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. she said there was before a dead I guy. Answer before that, before a I dead on, guy. Like, yeah. well, what are you doing? Um, I am climbing up the fireplace, mm-hmm. and I am trying to attach her sister's bow on the mantle, oh. so that she'll always be able to look at it. You do that, she doesn't notice because she's so immediately present with the other folks she's engaging, Yornir, Taishen, and uh, Scrim, but uh, you know that she'll appreciate what you're hitching, and it, it's easy enough to do that. You do it easily, and you're able to crawl back down and and find yourself back on the floor, the wooden floor of this I'll just sit on the space. mantle and like warm my feet. Mm. They are very warm by the time um, <laughs> she describes 
right there through that through that door. Ancient dead guy. He's still there. <laughs> what in the bed? Where's she? Where's she pointing when no, she says through the door? We've been sleeping in the bed. It's the bathroom. Natural. The body's in the right bathroom. Over there. Is what she's saying. Well, it's too cold to dig a grave. Uh, I would. Yeah, that checks out. I would walk over and like peek in and take a look. You open up the door. Did you open a real door? How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Holy artist. What the hell? That's ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, uh, from next to the window, a bird flies away. <laughs> and, then, uh, Any chance to pull that and then a UFO. And then your leg snaps. <laughs> um, and then what else? And there's a trap. There's a trap. The yeah. Little, little easy link. Oh shit! That's uh, that's not the right. <laughs> anyway. Oh, hey, there's Lee. <laughs> um, so yeah, 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 yeah. You push yeah. the door open, and uh, this is not an illuminated space. This is one of the darker rooms because it doesn't it isn't hit by the light of the fireplace. Um, but uh, were you to put put a candle in here, you feel like you'd be able to see, and you can see very faintly the shape, not on the toilet. But in the corner. Um, let's use oh, this. Oh god, why is there a fucking token? Like, <laughs> token? I'm just, I'm just, that it's a Skyrim gonna... draugr. <laughs> <laughs> that, that bow thing's gonna be <laughs> real sweet yeah. to the army <laughs> of the dead just assaults our elven fortress and Slum- rips it all to the ground. Slumped over is a dried out mummy of a man. A ancient <laughs> oh, <what is> elf <laughs> who yeah, yeah. doesn't, who looks whole. Uh, for the most part. <laughs> um, I'll shut the door. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a dead old guy in there. Ow. Like a, like a body. I don't... It now occurs to me that I may have been a bit hasty in taking off all of my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> He says, Wang jangly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Butt flap yeah. clearly yeah. open. <laughs> Wendigo oh. target acquired. Thank you, Polly Slimazel. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have uh, a renewed sense of vigor when it comes to perhaps voting for Dorney's plan of continuing with the flower quest. Are you sure you don't want to live in this house with the dead corpse for the rest of eternity? What I was thinking more immediately is in light of recent events, we should burn this corpse. Yes. We can place him into the fireplace. Well, maybe outside. It's gonna it's smell like burning stink. corpse. And <laughs> it's here. We're about to eat dinner. Um, God, no amount of ancient estuary is gonna cover that. It's gonna get in the nose. It's gonna can, coat your mouth. We can burn the, the, the corpse. That would be easy enough. There's plenty of oil for the lanterns, and you can see that uh, in sconces, uh, all all around, hanging from the ceiling, um, she's she's lit up this place with uh, all of these beautiful um, or neat iron worked uh, uh, lamps. Oh yeah, Mr. Fire Blossom. I'm like just throwing <laughs> bowl after bowl into a pot. <laughs> just. <laughs> I'm just chucking every bowl that And you're finding you're finding dried vegetables that you can use, mushrooms. You're finding um a, 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 all of this stuff oh, is, right. is perhaps ancient, um but in Drakkar, uh, you're living in a refrigerator. Uh and all, all of it mm-hmm. seems as fresh as, as 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 if it had been dried just yesterday or a week ago. Oh, and yeah, so- you haven't even explored the full opportunities that this house has possibly to offer. This will this will this will make do, and so I call out, Mr. Fire Blossom. Did you check to see how the uh, the the ancient dead guy died? <laughs> uh no, I didn't go. It was very dark in there, and the last person that died with us turned into a horrible monster. And right, well, I I think well, I that... won't say what happened after that. But... No, I think the 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 we found him in his bed. Lying back with his head up. It seemed like he died of natural causes. 
There's a lot of mystery to this land we don't understand. We just dealt with someone who died in our arms in front of us and shifted into a horrible monster. Pelts from uh, animals we had killed months back came to life once again and tried to harm us. It doesn't seem wise to leave something that could potentially animate against us in our sleep. I just came from a world of monsters. Is the world nothing but monsters? No, it's not. Sometimes you're told that things are monsters and they end up being the best thing that ever happened to you. Where I come from, I found a glade that was beautiful and full of wonder. And it made me realize that no matter how dark the world may seem or scary the stories people tell you may be, there will always be pockets of beauty. There will always be places for hope. There will always be things to live for. You just have to go searching for them. Sound like my dad. I don't hate that. Dad was a smart cookie. Well, are we going to do this? Do you want to keep living with a corpse? No. Yeah, we should do it. Could head outside really quick and gather some twigs, build a pyre. We could get the body onto it and I could light it up. I should not have put my gear down. <laughs> I walk up over my pile, I like get my hatchet. And, and as I'm <laughs> chugging more bowls, and <laughs> <laughs> as they're leaving, I'll say, well, dude. All that said, it was a beautiful uh, speech by Miss Marks. There are a lot of monsters in Jagar. <laughs> so just be careful outside. <laughs> I mean, the whole world is not monsters. But in Jagar, there are, yes, quite a lot of monsters. Yeah. So uh, just be careful out there. Scrim, help me with the body. Uh, oh, um, no, I can get it. <laughs> I'm still extremely vulnerable. And I'm uh, overseeing Bonobos' cooking. Yeah. And he's naked! Yeah. Scrim <laughs> <laughs> is just standing there doing the flap thing back and forth. He has a very handsome red onesie on, I thought. I uh, don't think that was meant to be red. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's the second like most was... disgusting thing that's happened tonight. Yeah. That's a beige onesie. Uh, so I'll get everything except my staff and my, and my tusks, and I'll go over to the corpse, and I'll sort of get him and I'll just throw him over my my shoulder. Ugh. He's um, light. He's, he's, like, he's like picking up a hornet's nest. Kind of papery. What? A hornet's nest? Oh, yeah. God. He's like paper, he's like, paper mache. He's <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> between paper mache and corn. Who knows how yeah. fucking old this guy yeah. is, but he's like... Yeah, he's he's light. I broke off a piece of his thigh meat. <laughs> <laughs> there was no it's meat. It's just now. it's just paper. It's just like coming apart. Yeah, yeah. I'll falling like apart like leaves. I'm gonna like get outside. the handheld vacuum. It's like balsam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do you find one on the one? <laughs> <laughs> Before I pick him up, I want to do a quick look to see if I can see any wounds or any signs of disease. Make a medicine check. At advantage. Wounds. Why not? Balsam. Any wounds? Pretty good. Uh, okay. uh, it's going to be over 20. Um, With an over 20, I will say that you... Uh, uh, 25. Before you pick him up, you look at each of his limbs, you turn his head side to side, you look at the top of his head, you look inside of his mouth, uh, you even his explore the unmentionable off. areas, and <laughs> you, you don't find... <laughs> 
you check under the you check under the hood. I thought I'm a paper tiger, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> you pick up his ball sack, and instead of falling back down, it slowly floats. Oh, like yeah. a feather. Yeah, no you tics lift, under you lift up his elven penis, and uh, it's like it's like if you've completely burned a marshmallow through. <laughs> So it's mostly just carbon. <laughs> just kind of fried carbon. <laughs> You, uh, so this guy's probably you not no to rise against us. You have absolutely no reason to believe with an over 20 that <laughs> the deduction that Daisy and her sister Honey came to is incorrect. Oh, he was found silent and calm in his, de- in his bed, his now deathbed, and they moved him in here, and he doesn't have a, a, a single blemish to his name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw him over my shoulder and take him outside. Uh, I can burn this unless anyone wants to join me. The the group of you, uh, <laughs> except for Barnabas and Tai Shan, uh, open the door. Let me mm-hmm. <laughs> Shouldn't have opened the door. Uh, you push forward, and as soon as the door creaks open, you notice that it's immediately apparent. There are Dozens of animals all standing outside of this place. That's not okay. The <laughs> sun has set and it is dark of night, but as far back as you can see, and we'll pause now for the thank you for the Thank bits. you, Polly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on it. And this was. Do the twist. Do the twist. Do the twist. Love me some chubby checker. Uh, <laughs> did you know that one of them named themselves after the other, Chubby Checker and Fats Domino? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, wow. I think, uh... I can't remember which one. Fats was Domino first. is the original. Yes, really? so Chubby uh, Checker. Checker That's really Fats amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought it was the other way around. It might be, be, but one of them is. <laughs> Your near opens the door. It's almost time when the time is here, the time that's only once a year. <laughs> Because it's so near Woodland Cooter Christmas. <laughs> Hail Satan! <laughs> She's like, I'm just the dragons. We're not allowed to say Hail Satan. <laughs> uh, you open the door, and you're stopped uh, with a elven corpse on your back. Uh, the Taishan and Queenie just behind you because uh, there are a line of these animals of all different varieties, many different beasts. Uh, what appear to be some bear, uh, some fox, some caribou. I don't know. What, what is the joke? I think we're all scared and we're afraid. It's more nervous. I think it's gallows no, no. I know you're saying some bear. This is like multiple bears, but I'm like, this is some bear. Some fox. Some fucking bear over here. Yeah. Yeah. There's, There's a fucking, fucking fox. Yeah. Yeah. Some fucking yeah. caribou yeah. here. Yeah. I don't even know who's right. that guy. I'll take it back. It's not nervous laughter. Not my caribou. Not my problem. As thick as the snow is and as it is coming down, you are uh, alarmed to see that they are all standing um, alert and staring directly at you as you are standing in this entrance. They seem intent on focusing on, on you. There's this horrible silence aside from the wind and the falling snow and the sound of the crackling fire behind you in the warm hearth of this home. What do you do? What these days? Where did all these... Not natural. (coughs) Where did all these animals come from? We we haven't seen... Animals almost the entire time here! This can't be good. Let me see if I can do something. Hey, Bonobos! No, I again hear you over the sizzling bowls. Oh, I... What are bowls? I was just gonna say I'm very happy that we're still inside. (laughs) <laughs> I just, I hope they're doing all right out there. I, I, I'll say that just being warmed by this blaring stove is quite the, uh, you know, campfire just doesn't do the same, uh, doesn't doesn't warm the bones you, quite the You same. might not These feel this, but being where you are, the door hasn't closed. So you heard them open the door, and the rush of cold air came in. The And it's not like a quick in and out. They are standing there for a frozen 
uncomfortable long amount of yeah, time. As soon as I realized that the door is still open, I just I go sit in the kitchen because it's a lot warmer in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I make no notice that the door hasn't shut. I'm just annoyed that it's cold again. Yeah, you, you, ah, pass, you, you pass, you, you kind of glance over and you see the hey, three a bomb? standing paralyzed <laughs> and frozen, <laughs> staring out into the night, yeah. uh, uh, the snowstorm of the I dark. just give an offhanded, like, close the door! And I just, like, go into the kitchen to annoy Barnabas, basically. And uh, do you have anything that you could do? <clears throat> I, w- I will say, uh, <clears throat> stay back to all of them. And then with my speech of Beast and Leaf, I can, commu- I can communicate with, though not understand, beasts and plants. And I have advantage on charisma checks to influence my <laughs> as a fear bulk ability. <clears throat> you start to see some, not all. But some of them start to take a step back, take a step back, take a step back. The ones on the periphery are unmoving, but it's almost as though the ones who are taking a step back are opening a path for you. Oh. Down and out into the forest. (laughs) And that's when you hear a scream. You hear another sound. This is not the scream of a newborn Wendigo, like what you've heard before. As horrifying as that was in that moment, this is ancient. This feels massive. It feels far away. It doesn't create that piercing thunder sound that hurt your ears when you initially heard it so close. It's somewhere out there in the deep of the woods and yet you can hear it as crystal as if it were next to you all all of you oh even in the kitchen we even even in the kitchen you hear this siren call for lack of a better word sounds something like this Mm. it's a death whistle And that's where we'll call tonight's session. Oh my god! You you actually got a death whistle? I'm so I have to drive home you. alone after this. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play the whistle one more time? You're not making what it. What the hell? That was awful. That made my but skin back up like... from the mic just a little bit. Hold on, hold on. Let me. It, it, it's probably peeking the fuck out of the mics. Okay. Doesn't it make you feel uncomfortable? Yes. I want to poop my pants. In fact, I might have. I have to check. I'm touching claws. I'm touching claws. I'm touching claws. And it's <laughs> fucking midnight right now. Yeah. So let's fucking go. Amarna says two minutes, two minutes past midnight. Uh, Amarna says, well, I don't have to pee anymore. I pointed everything. Holy shit. We're not done. Nope. Don't go <laughs> nowhere. Oh my What's god. Next? It ain't you shouldn't open that fucking it's door. It's time for a Vantress and Chill where we're going to talk about our favorite moments. We're going to theorize because we always have a lot to do in this campaign about theories. And we're going to answer all of your questions and comments. So don't go anywhere. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow. So if you are just recently joining us or you're looking for more D&D, we'll be back here tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And we're playing Beneath Dark Wings. Uh, and then this campaign uh, will be back again uh, June 3rd. Um... And check Elder out, Wendigo. Check out yeah. our... Join our Discord. Um, if you want to hang out, we just launched the Curse of Shadanya podcast. We would love if you checked it out, if you told your friends, uh, gave it a listen. Um, it would help us out a ton. And Share it in uh, groups and message boards. Yeah. Um, and finally, we are going to cut over, so don't go anywhere. Happy Friday the 13th. <laughs>